Stokes is away. What an over from Pat Cummins. That single, a couple of dots, a boundary, but two wickets, 46 for four. And the Australian supporters that are here at Lords were cheering every run that was painfully eked out in Australia's second innings with the bat. Now they're cheering their captain for two outstanding deliveries. First Root made the decision to play it and then had nowhere to go. Warner at first slip. And then this from Harry Brook. Maybe hanging back a touch, but that is a beautiful delivery. You'd never know with Baz, though, would you, what the state of the game is? Deep down, he's probably thinking this is mm, whatever. So, change of field. Initially, point was posted on the fence. He's come in to save the single. Deep square leg, fine leg. A couple of slips and Cameron Green with his long reach in the gully. I think it's been very good from Australia, Woody. Very defensive from the start, very un-Australian from the start in Birmingham with the sweepers on the offside, but they've actually just stuck to their plan and they've decided that they're going to go and try and play the traditional way of Test Match cricket. We're going to back time. There was that graph that we showed earlier in the day in that third man piece that I did. And all the defensive strokes that batters have batted. The top four from both teams. It was the top four batters of Australia that have defended more balls than the top four batters of England. And so far, Australia got up in Birmingham, and it looks like Australia is going to get up at Lords. And at the end of the day, Wardy, it's, the game is about winning. And in the Ashes, it means a lot more than any other series or any other test match. Australia are in a fabulously strong position in this game. And they've had to play some excellent cricket to get into this position because they have had, you could argue, the harder of the conditions when the clouds have rolled in with the bat. England in their first innings had the opportunity to bat with the sun shining. But on a pitch like it was but it's going to do absolutely nothing. They found movement. Stark in the air, Cummings off the pitch. That's also why it's been so impressive from Australia in this particular test, because of the conditions. And you bring up a very, very good point there, because I think England on day one expected things to happen, and Australia just made it happen for them. Dismissal again of Harry Brook. Just enough movement. Up the slope. Clipping the top of off. Yeah. Quick single. Have to be quick. That hit was... Obviously sort of hanging back a wee bit as the ball was coming back to the stumps and he's been stretching his hamstring. But they've got through safely enough, 49 for four. The 
bumper barrage today to see Australia dismissed in their second innings for 279. taking four but all the England bowlers got through a load of overs tough overs now the wicket here and they'll be thinking about strapping their pads on yeah exactly Ben Stokes he's shaping up very well he did that in the first innings batted beautifully to the close of play and then first rock yesterday he got a beauty from Mitchell Stark what we haven't seen yet is the bouncer theory and the bouncer plan. And I agree with Mark Taylor. This is fun. This is fun to watch with a brand new ball attacking both sides of the bat. As a goal's a bouncer. But it's not every ball. Well, it's not a clever tactic either. It's an obvious tactic. Once you saw the ball moving for Mitchell Stark, that was the time to keep the ball up to the bat. Played dividends with those four wickets. Nathan Lyon, cult hero, that was extended today as he hobbled out on one leg to keep Mitchell Stark company with the bat. Imagine any chance of him. Taking any further part in this Ashes series is now completely gone. Even that the way he walked out to bat and then had to run one. That's done even more damage. So looks like a good selection from Australia to drop Scotty Bowling and play Mitchell Stark with the theory of bowling short and bowling fast. Just played better, haven't they, so far? Well, you could argue he was slightly fortunate with the first wicket of Zach Crawley, the tickle down the leg side through to Carey, but the delivery to Castle Ollie Pope. Not sure how you keep that out as a right handed batsman. Very quick movement and late movement back in. 49 for four. He's a right hander, can he do much about that, Kev? I mean, people argue maybe Holly Pope fell over it, but look at the late movement. It's the late movement that does here. I think he's uh, thinking halfway down and punch that ball down the offside, and it looks dreadful when it misses the bat and knocks the stumps out, but you could see that delivery when it's almost had him he's thinking i can just punch that down the ground and get a couple of runs two three maybe even a four if i hit it well and then it's that last split second bit of swing that makes it look way more horrible than what it should 90 mile an hour that was as well so it's that split second decision Duckett wants to take on any short stuff in this over. Just be mindful that there are three catches out in the deep. Fine leg. Kawaja is sort of on the gully line. He's being changed now. It might be just a change of personnel. Steve Smith is going to go into that position. And we've got a deep mid wicket on the fence as well. And we've got more changes. Fielders running everywhere. Complete change to the leg side field and the offside field as a result. Warner is still in a, a wide first slip. Kawaja at gully. Oh, Unusual pull shot. About four or five balls ago, I said that Australia haven't gone to the short stuff and it's been exciting to watch. I think the six balls that have been bowled since have. Four or five of them have been short, and now the field is set for that short stuff. Backward point on the boundary, too. It's nice 
nicely controlled. Well, a couple of reasons for this. They might feel that the ball is losing some of its sharpness, and of course, Ben Duckett did get out to the short ball for 98 in the first innings. Ironic cheers as England go to 50. Wake up, madam. So the field will change for Ben Stokes. Will the tactic change? Will they go a bit fuller? Probably because they've got more catchers behind the wicket. This is how England bowled in the afternoon session. 98% of the deliveries bowled by the seamers, short. 1% full. Contrast that to Australia in this innings, and they've hit a very good length 48% of the time. You can do that when there's movement, and the ball moved for Stark, and it seemed for Cummins, and a bit for Hazelwood. Pleasing punch off the back foot from Stokes. A couple. 52 for four after 16. to continue from the pavilion end. Round the wicket to duck it with the option of some short stuff. Three men in the leg side in the deep. Might be time for Mr. Head to have a roll. Off spinner to the left-handed batters, bringing in both edges, the LBW. Have a look and see how England want to play. Why not? Late in the day, there's an arrow left of play. Different angle and tactics for Stokes over the wicket, an extra catcher eyeing the outside edge. Short leg is in. Oh! It's straight through him. Renshaw under the lid. Got, got my uh, views on Renshaw being on the field with Nathan Lyon's injury. I think Todd Murphy should be on the field, getting him into the series, feeling a part of the team, especially if he's going to play a role at Headingley. He's going to play a role in that test match up north. Starts later on 
in the week. I just think that just coming to grips with the Ashes and actually being part of this Australian unit on the field will be the better decision. Maybe he's just not as good a short leg as Renshaw. I really get your point about getting Murphy into the game, but I think that's probably more the point. They want the best, the better fielder in the field replacing Nathan Lyon. And whatever happens in this test match, it's a very quick turnaround for both sets of players, and especially both sets of seamers. Think of the way England bowled today, which was immense amount of short stuff which is very physically demanding it was also the length of spells that Ben Stokes was asking the seamers to operate with it wasn't three overs and have a blow it was eight nine ten the captain himself into like 12 13 overs on the spin territory well, it's another reason why Travis Head should come into the game now before the close of play and give the bowlers a rest give the fast bowlers a rest he has been spinning the ball in his hands. Not seen him rotate the arms over and warm the shoulders up yet. So maybe we're not going to see him. Also, with the ball as new as it is, maybe that little bit more bounce for head. Solidly in behind that is Ben Stokes. 55 for four. for England still trailed by 315 runs and uh, I like what I'm seeing from from Pat Cummins today I'm only sitting at the back of the commentary box and we thought it'd be a great time if you had Nathan Lyon which Australia don't have mind you but um, you haven't got your, your best off spinner when two left-handers are in try someone else and Travis Head is not the worst it's a great time to bowl As I said, two left-handers in, in, and there's about an hour to go until the end of play here. So, really good time to try Travis Head and get him in the game. Ball still be hard, decent seam on it. That pad slip. A little bit of drift. Nicely bowled, but he fends and gets a single. You don't think okay. there'll be a lot of turn here. He's got to spin it up the hill at Lords, but he's getting a little bit of drift in towards the two left handers at the moment. Oh, nice ball. The other thing about bowling traps head is that it gives you your quicker bowlers a chance just to take a breather. Bowl them from one end. Shorter spells. Not the easy time for either of these two batsmen to try to be too aggressive. Temptation is there. There's mid on is up, mid off halfway back. Ah! Well, no, that's going straight on. It's missing leg that. It was a quick shout, but wasn't sustained by Australia. They knew it skidded straight on. Missing leg. Oh, good start. Well, that was a brave shot. After being hit on the pad, that. 57 for four. Here's that LBW again. It just slides down the hill and keeps going. Clearly missing leg stump. Oh, 
don't forget the women's ashes continues tonight coverage is actually on right now on Sky Sports Mix Channel 416 Australia have won the toss and I believe they're bowling in that match first T20 Cummins to continue very orthodox cricket all of a sudden three slips in place Travis heads at sort of a backward point bat pad there's still two back on the hook Apart from that, we're seeing, dare I say it, orthodox test cricket. Don't shout it about, Tubbs. Australia have been fantastic. Yep. A single for that. Uh, Pat Cummins, he's been good for a long time. He, Played there, his first test way back in South Africa, 2010 or 11, and then had years out. Played at the age of 18, man of the match, his first test. Then had uh, five, six years out with various injuries. Eventually, got himself fully fit, but over those injuries, and since he's come back, he's been a world-class bowler, no doubt about that. Strike rate, average of under 22 with the ball. Always at you, Pat Cummins. Nicely played, Duckett. And has captained very, very well these two first tests. Pretty sure he hit the winning runs on debut as well, Toby. What a start to your test match career. 52 matches. 228 wickets, 8 fivers, 110 for. Top performer. That strike rate at 47, that's outstanding. No run. Interesting enough, he, his best is a six for, and I say it's interesting because he's the sort of guy that you think might have a seven or an eight, some really big haul. But I, he's just a regular wicket taker. He, a lot of two, three, fourfers, and often gets the big wicket. Yeah. Today it was Joe Root. That was the one Australia would have really wanted because he, they know he's the sort of player that can bat long, bat well into tomorrow, and others could play around him. been excellent this evening here is the wicket of Joe Root absolute beauty climbed up climbed on him Root looked to ride it what a beauty to Harry Brook really leading from the front exactly what you want from your captain Sixty for four. Beautiful afternoon now. A strange sort of day, actually. A little bit of drizzle early on. We lost the first five minutes, or we didn't lose them, but we started five minutes late. That's why we're going to. We'll go to five past seven tonight. We'll go to local, which is another uh, fifty-two minutes from now. So plenty of play left. head to continue yeah shot Ben Stokes is not going to let Travis head just bowl over after over without challenging him straight down the ground straight six was the first real sign of aggression many of the England batters Travis head not a big turner of the ball Stokes not quite getting to the pitch of it but fully it committing to the Come shot it. signal his intentions isn't he Ben Stokes and I'm not gonna let your bowl just dot after dot time around. single from Ben Duckett 
Yeah, and I suppose the other ele element to that, Mark, is the seamers are bowling so well. Have to look to score and get bogged down. Keep looking to score this evening. Take some sort of momentum back in your favour. Australia way on top at the moment. It's long sweep, it's up. I think it's going to be safe. Yeah, it does it fall short of Hayeswood in the deep. In between he and Pat Cummins, just for a moment, I reckon Ben Duckett would have had his heart in his mouth. Yeah, just a top edge. It is an area he likes to target. Good sweeper of the ball. His way to 98 in the first innings. He played that a few times. Oh. Pulling some shots out now. They're trying to get on top of Travis Head. Well, this will... Give Travis Head an opportunity if he can bowl well under pressure. This is where you're tested as a spinner. Bear in mind, he's only a part timer. Catch it! Oh, a little cry of catch there as well. Might have been a little bat pad. It's too far from Renshaw there at bat pad. Good job. Specialised position, short leg, no, no real opportunity there. Here's Renshaw straight off the bench. Oh, I like that. Plenty in that over. 70 for four. Shot of the footwork there, look at that little crossover step weight right behind it and not falling over head nice and still I'm trying to over hit it <laughs> when you put like Ben Stokes you've, you've just got to hit out of the middle it'll go for six absolutely Toby and I wonder if they've had a chat partnership now 25 between these two Duckett Stokes Australia's day today, although England fought well with the ball. A lot of short stuff today. Kept Australia down to a total of 279, an overall lead of 370. Mitchell Stark back into the attack. And it looks like we're going to see a bit more of what we've seen for most of the day. A lot more short stuff. No slips have gone out. There's only a gully. David Warner's at sort of a very fine gully, there's a very straight, deep third, fine leg, deep backward square, deep forward square leg. We're going to see some short stuff. Yeah, clear change of tactics here, Pat Cummins. Making the changes, start ball beautifully in his first spell. Got the ball, but ball to swing nicely and make inroads into the England batting lineup. Interesting to see how he'll bowl to Stokes. Catches and put in behind the wicket. First slip, second slip. Kawaja going to Gully. Bit more orthodox. Leg Gully now going to leg slip. Maybe a mix of both. Far more conventional feel for Ben Stokes. Maybe because he didn't go after the short stuff. He got a beauty actually for Mitchell Stark and Cameron Green caught him in the first innings at a, you know, sort of a widish second slip. A bit of extra pace and bounce off the pitch. He may have gone up the hill a little bit. Cameron Green took an excellent catch. He went quickly. So Australia are going to try the same tactics. More conventional to Stokes and short to Duckett. Ben Stokes in England's first innings that came in and after England had lost three for 34, it just played the short, the short ball in a more orthodox way. He wore a couple, dodged a couple, and wasn't 
didn't buy into hooks and pulls. That's after sort of Ollie Pope had gone hooking, Harry Brook had gone hooking, even Joe Root got out hooking. It's nice here by Holt. Stokes of Anix. He's still got that little bit of a limp. Well, 12 overs straight today. Enormous amount of strapping on his left knee, which is his front leg when he bolts. But then he got a little bit of cramp on his right leg, fielding on the boundary late in the Australia's second innings. So he's a bit of a walking wounded at the moment, is the English captain. Nicely hit straight to Labashone. 71 for four. Seventy-one for four. England require three hundred more runs to win. Australia six wickets. Take a two nils series lead. Still got tomorrow to go. We've got about forty minutes here left. Forty-five minutes left here. And Travis Head will continue. It's a big gap at mid on for Ben Duckett. Left that gap for him. Try and get him to hit through that area. <laughs> Trying to get him to play slightly across the line, I suspect it. Look to find the gap between bat and pad. Nice Eddie. Big gap down bottom left of screen there. And that's where he goes. Straight there. One bounce over the rope. Nicely struck. Yeah, beautiful shot from Ben Duckett. Clear change of intent and tact. Against Travis Head. What a huge turner of the ball. No change in the field, though. <laughs> Tries to go offside, but doesn't find the gap on this occasion. That was a full toss. He throws the head back. Feels like he missed out there. Come on, lads. Bring Come on, Trav. Come on, Trav. Get it. Oh, nice hand. It's nicely struck again. This mightn't go all the way. Cummins will track this down. Get that rough at that far end of the of the pitch. It's outside the off stump of these two left-handers. It might be something for maybe a Manus Labuschagne or a Steve Smith oh, out nice. there. Nice that one's hit nicely to one, but there is certainly a little bit of rough up that end. Maybe for a leg spinner. Seventy-eight for four. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree, Toby. Possibly even a conversation for Alex Carey to have with Travis Head. There's a great angle on what's in front of him and what might entice one to spin, possibly two. That's all you need. Batters have been attacking. He gets the length wrong here. 
a bit tighter there. He's in the game. Obviously, you have the bowling Stephen Smith. Man, it's Lavashain. Stark once again to duck at this. What a defensive field again. That's got to be a wide. It's got to be a wide, yes. We'll have to see more of that. In the short stuff. We don't get it right. And we'll have to see more penalties. You can see from that shot there from Ben Duckett, he's certainly looking for that short one. He said the field will tell him that straight away. So you've got to make sure you don't just assume it's going to happen. It wasn't that short that one. And then he played with sort of an unusual cross bat defensive shot. See you there. That, be careful of that, particularly with this sort of slightly too paced pitch at the moment. See Starks just banging it in there, looking for some uneven bounce, looking for one maybe to keep a bit low or one to bounce a little unusually. Duckett's thinking almost predominantly to hit to the leg side, mainly with a pull or hook shot. Almost complete opposite style to Ben Stokes, both looking to score but in different areas, picking and choosing deliveries. Duckett looking square. Better. Just ease that out through cover. Huge gaps out there. Stark's going to go around the wicket here. Even more awkward for Ben Duck at this. Left arm round the wicket up into your ribs. Ooh. Not much fun, that. Nicely played from Duckett. That'll be four. He beat Smith and Warner. Both in the deep on the leg side. He kept it down and controlled it nicely. Yeah, good shot from Ben Duckett. Stays on the pull shot. Has been difficult to play throughout this whole test match for both sides. Plays it down. Uses all the pace and it finds the gap. Oh, wouldn't he have loved that in the first innings on 98? It's a very similar ball. Just a different line, I suppose, from around the wicket. But handled that nice. Back over the wicket now, Stark. Well, that's going to be another wide. Australia have just lost their way a little bit here, I reckon. These two have moved this partnership onto 41. Looking more comfortable. Stark just not quite finding the rhythm he found with that brand new ball. Yeah, just for a short period of time here. Obviously changing plan. Four wickets have been taken in a very conventional manner through good bowling, good planning. No run! That's better. 
just think with Mitchell Stark, he's got such good you know, natural pace that, yeah, bowl the odd short one, sure. Um, unsettle a, a batsman's footwork, but he's the sort of guy who could beat you with pace, nip one back up the hill, maybe just take one away, might just find an edge. And, as you say over here, challenge the inside and the outside edge of the bats at his pace. Not easy as a batsman. Don't get carried away with a short stuff. Bowl it, but don't get carried away with it. Uh, that was a strange over, that. 86 for four. Six for four, England, needing 371 for victory. I thought we were going to have a bowling change. Cameron Green came all the way to the top of his mark, and looks like Pat Cummins has had a change of mind. Travis Head is going to stay on from our nursery end of the ground. Yeah, I don't mind either change, to be honest. I'd like to see Travis Head just change the line that he is bowling to both left-handers. Potentially access that rough. Get some great drift in towards the stumps. But if he can utilise any of the footballer's follow-throughs, might get a bit of purchase. I was just interested, as I said last day, but I would have liked to have seen maybe Marnus Labuschagne or Steve Smith bowling over in this nursery and into that rough outside the left-handers off stump. I can think back to the Ashes four years ago. I think it was Marnus Labuschagne who picked up Jack Leach late on day five, which helped Australia win that test match and secure the Ashes. Just sort of spun out of the rough and Leach gloved one to Matthew Wade at bat pad. Mid on back now for Stokes. No slip. That's a little surprising. Come on, Hedy. Come on, lads. that through. He should get two here now. It's his, through his overs very quickly, Travis Head. Doesn't give the bowlers a huge break when he bowls. He bowls them over in about 90 seconds. They're not going to be popular with the seamers. Oh, nice. two, two more here. That's well played. It's easy to the gap again. Two more. Good batting. 90 for four. Cheers. Cheers. There we go. This is um, the first T20 match between Australia and England. As I said, Australia won the toss in the first T20 match. And, uh, sent England into bat. Yeah, Dunkley is in. Yeah, it's a must-win game probably for England after Australia won the test match there in the women's ashes. Here, England a 90 for four. And we'll change up here. 
Yes, yeah, so Sainz moving in with Ricky Potter. Yeah, thanks, Tub. Good afternoon, Nas. Good afternoon, everyone. Change of bowling here as well, actually. Cameron Green into the attack from the pavilion end. He was the one that really started the short ball barrage for Australia in the first innings. Oh, quick. I was 90 miles an hour. Obviously, we know he's height. He's six foot seven. And that'll be a wide first ball. That was very short. Yeah, they haven't quite got it right. In the first innings, they got their bounces spot on around about chest high. That's three wides now, a couple to Stokes and Duckett. Duckett has just sort of short arm jabbed them so far. This time's a bit higher and he goes after it. That's the one you lose control of. Yeah, that was a long way up over his head as well. It's actually the second one for the over already. So he's now got to get them right, Cameron Green. He's now got to be below shoulder height, which has made a change in the field. Looks like he might go back to some regulation length bowling now. Steve Smith finds himself a slip. Matt Renshaw comes up, and Marcus Harris is also on the field. He's down at third man. He's going to be going to a backward point position that we've seen so frequently in this game. I think that's probably because they've used their two for the over already. In the first couple of deliveries, the wide that was too high and that last bouncer that Duckett hit off the toe end of the bat. So because he's used his two, it's going to be a bit more orthodox with the odd short ball and about waist high. That's a beautiful shot. Expecting it further up and dealt with it. Yeah, that's crunched. That raced across the outfield. Very bottom hand dominant player, isn't he? When he sees something he likes, he goes very hard at it. Bang. Right out of the middle of the bat. 50 partnership in 69 deliveries. Good recovery from England. They need a lot more from these two. Got to be careful, you don't drag them onto the stumps. Pitch is just losing pace. And be the th through the shot early. Good touch, a big hundred here against Ireland. He got 180, got 98 here in the first innings, 39 second innings. I'd actually like to see Cameron Green use the other angle here, Ness, over the wicket and push the ball across, stuck it. You know he doesn't like letting the ball go, so if you can just angle the ball across and tempt him to try and run that ball backward point on the offside. But a man at deep backward point saving the boundary anyway. That's where it goes in that direction, but that will be four more. Very good over for England. 99 for four. Yeah, that's a beautiful shot. It was just too wide on that occasion from Green. Seems to me like he's looking to be more and more aggressive by the ball. He's scoring quickly. 43 off 56 with brings up his fifth boundary. So Travis head out of the attack. Mitchell Stark will come back into the attack from the nursery end. Most of his bowling from the pavilion and in this game.
the wickets already. A, a strangle down the leg side, but an absolute beauty to get Ollie Pope. Stunning delivery. Delivery of the Test Series so far. There played pretty well from Ben Stokes. 100 up for England. And they come to life, the crowd. There's, a little, there's been a little bit of extra bounce from that sort of area there that Mitchell Stark just landed that ball. It's a good bounce last night. We saw Tom get some big bounce there, and that one's just surprised. Ben Stokes as well and it's been that angle it's been from this end and it's been when it's been a little bit short and from a right arm of bowling around the wicket or Mitchell Stark bowling this left arm over it's obviously down the slope he will get some movement back into the left handers Wide, slingy, and exactly the same result as the last de delivery from Cameron Green. Back cut for four. Bread and butter for Duckett. Yep, yeah, it's a bad ball and it's put away. One thing we know about this England team, if you offer them up anything like this, any sort of scoring opportunity, they're going to go after it. They can score quickly. can also, as we saw in the first innings, can be at their detriment. Tactics have almost had a bob each way here, Australia. Do you think it's time really to commit to the short stuff? I was thinking the exact same thing, that's getting late in the day. About half an hour for 25 minutes of play left. Duckett's looked to take on everything, hasn't he? So why not? Why not try it? He got so close to that 100 in the first innings, he couldn't help himself. He kept going after the short ball. Just make that one mistake. That's all it takes, just one little mistake. This partnership is broken. You've got a new batsman before stumps tonight. Wait! That was the thing about England today in the field. They completely committed to that plan. 98% of deliveries in the middle session were short. They were not doubting their plan under Stokes at all. At the moment... Australia, the odd short ball. And one of them got Joe Root. <laughs> he wants a couple at least. Hurries down the hill. Head tidies up. It's 49 for Duckett. It's 106 for four. Green has called for the ground staff, just he's not happy with that front foot where he's been landing.
Well, talking about committing to the plan, the field suggests that that's what Cameron Green's going to do. Short leg, three men out leg side, a couple out offside. Oh, no. In the air, will it land short of everyone? It does. Well, he didn't play the short ball well in the first innings either. Ben Stokes, he wore a few on the body. See him there, he's disappointed with himself. This is a very, very well delivered short ball from Cameron Green. 85 miles an hour, and it's the length there. That's that awful length. Up under the armpit, he tries to ride the bounce. That one doesn't bounce. Those two deliveries sum up why the short ball has been tough on this pitch. The one first one flew through and hurried Stokes. The next one just died on him. Two pace pitch. Yeah, I said it earlier today, Nas. This tactic of having all these men deep on the leg side, that's that's great. But I think the short leg becomes just about the most important fielding position with a field like this and this bowling tactic because you can't then just stand there and try and ride the bounce you've got to make a decision to duck early get out of the way or you've actually got to take the short ball on so he's there for two reasons he's there yes he's there to take the catch of the one fended off but also just to get the seed of doubt in the batsman's mind And this is also what it does. When you have a field like that, it scrambles the batsman's mind. Have a look at his footwork pattern here. This is a full ball. Did not move his feet at all. He's stuck back there expecting the short one. Oh. And again, just staying a bit leg side of it. This is now a good battle. All-rounder against all-rounder. It's definitely inside his head here. Definitely inside. Footwork patterns scrambled. His thoughts are scrambled. He seemed to shake his head there. He's disappointed. Look at him go here. Oh, he doesn't know whether to duck, whether to play, or whether to leave. That was well played. Good over from Cameron Green. 106 for four. That over might convince Cummins to commit to the plan both ends. Start the quickest of the bowlers. Yeah, I reckon Cummins has seen enough and he thinks it's not moving when you pitch it up. So we're going to go to England's plan this afternoon and their plan late on day two. Tom jab and a half century for Ben Duckett. That's twice in the match. He would love to convert this one into a hundred. England would love him to convert. Yeah, well played. Has played well. And aggressive again. 50 off to 62 balls. Looks to play his shots. It's pretty well organised to me. And he's had to defend balls. He's, he's good at defending the straighter line deliveries anything with width he goes after and plays well particularly square of the wicket on the offside Catch! short and wide he's thrown the kitchen sinker that stokes 
I think it's inside his head now, so I really do. I think this short ball has rattled him here. Might not be quite as comfortable as we think on that left knee of his either. It might have something to do with, you think about him playing on, that's his back leg, so when he's playing back. Cut. Not, not, he might just be just in a bit more discomfort than we know. Going to keep coming after him now though, Australia. And sense a little weakness, a little chink in the armour. Pulled hard, nailed for four. It's a very good shot. Very good shot. Wasn't high enough on that occasion from Stark. That's the easy one for a batsman. Anywhere between waist and chest is the easy ball to pull away. And that's exactly what he got. And he got just enough width as well. We've been talking all game, well, certainly the last few days, about the line of the short ball being so important when you've got that heavy leg side field. It's got to be at the body. And if you err on line, it's got to be down the leg side, not outside off. Misses that on the leg side there. He wanted to catch up with it. He just hasn't been short enough this over, Mitchell Stark. He wasn't that far away from the glove, in fact, on the way down the leg side. But you've got to be challenged the armpit, that's the height. Great take, great take from Carey down the leg side. 112 for four. Women's Ashes going on here at Lords at Edgebaston. The women's Ashes have kicked off the white ball section. Obviously lost the test match. That's at Edgebaston, that's on now on Sky Sports Mix. 20 odd for one England having been inserted by Australia. Sky Sports main event will be going straight to the women's ashes after the last ball here and we'll be reacting on Sky Sports cricket to the action that we've seen at Lords. This looks to me that he's a bit more uncomfortable against Cameron Green. He was happy to stand up and take on Mitchell Stark last over. It does look like he's hobbling a little bit on that back leg. Can't make it easy when he's trying to duck and weave. And these are some of the ways he played the short ball in the first innings. I've never really seen him flinch much like this. He's normally very good at ducking or taking it on. Looked a little bit uncertain in the first innings, and I think that's just starting to show again here against Green. Short leg there, waiting for one off the glove that so nearly happened in Green's first over. This is what I'm talking about as well. 
really surprised him. Might have bounced just a little bit more. Agonisingly close for Green and for Australia. himself room toe end of the bat down to fine leg unbelievable how has Duckett got that down to Stark at fine leg he was trying to go offside it goes leg side and Stark takes the catch they're going to check the no ball the way they're reacting they must have heard it wasn't a no ball and it's that man Cameron Green we can never be too certain with Cameron Green. He's had a lot of no-ball issues in this game, but that one's well behind. Almost off the back of the bat. Fine leg, very, very fine. It's a good catch. He made good ground, Mitchell Stark. He's got very, very good catching hands. And in it goes. Big breakthrough late on day four for Australia. Duckett gone for 50. 1-1-3 one, one, for five. Celebrating there, Mitchell Stark. He won't be celebrating in a second. And that's been overruled. It's not out. The umpire, the third umpire, feels that he's grounded that ball as he dragged it along the floor. Unbelievable moment. We saw this with Steve Smith with the catch of Root in the first innings. Has he got his fingers underneath the ball? That's the key law. You have your fingers under the ball, then it doesn't matter if it's slightly touching the ground. Third umpire didn't feel he did, so they have to go again. Duckett survives. Well, I must admit, I'm a little bit confused. I'm a little bit confused, and this is where I was confused with even going back to Cameron Green's catch in the World Test Championship final as well. Where are they judging when and how the ball is under control? As far as I'm concerned, if you look at the two in this game, Mitchell Stark has had much better control of that ball and for longer than what Steve Smith did when he took Joe Root in the first innings. He cannot believe it. Cannot believe it. He definitely dragged the ball along the turf. Under him 13 for four. Duckett survives. Well, there's been three controversial catches in about a month. There was the Cameron Green catch in the World Test Championship, which was given out. And then there was the Smith catch first innings when Root was batting. 
We have to be in control of the ball and your body, but the umpire felt there that the fingers were underneath. And then there was that catch we've just seen. States you have to be in complete control of the ball and your body. Just had it confirmed from Maria Erasmus. He felt he was in control of the ball but not his body. Well, that's the other thing I don't understand with the Smith catch compared to that one. Now you could also argue that Smith didn't have any control over his body whatsoever. He was still sort of sprawling across the ground. And in fact, after Smith's catch was apparently controlled, the ball actually came out of his hand. It was dislodged after it hit the ground, and he had to regather it again up on his chest. It was an incredible reprieve from Duckett because it was a really odd shot. From nowhere, he backed away a little bit like Harry Brook. He was trying to go over the offside. And fair play to Stark at fine leg, being aware that it was gone leg side. You watch here, he's backing away, trying to hit it offside. And it goes down to Stark. Complete control of the ball, yes. And your body, no, according to Erasmus. There's a bit of chat going on as well between Stark and Duckett. It's not Duckett's fault. He's got nothing to do with it. He's just walking, making his way from the field, and then the umpires have stopped him. And umpire Erasmus has decided that he's not convinced that Stark is in control of the ball and control of his actions. Fourteen for four. All I know is those ground staff behind Stark must be Aussies. They were celebrating the catch. Spot the Aussie ground staff, Ricky. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> well, eventful. This should be the final over of the day. Steve Smith get the attention of Pat Cummins there. He was halfway back at deep backward square. He's bringing himself up now. Maybe looks like a leg slip. It's going to be a very fine leg slip now. 
asking Stokes maybe to take it on. One more man comes up saying, go on then, have a hook. We've still got men out. Stokes just gets out of the way. He's not playing the game yet. Four balls left in the day. Heading the 2019, Ricky. What were they chasing, Benny, at Hed Headingley? 3-5-9 they were chasing there. Stokes at the crease overnight. 3-7-1 they're chasing here. I do think it's worth a crack but a good Yorker here as well from Cam Green. Everything's been short to Stokes. I think he's unsettled him. He's pushing him back. Get him thinking it's going to be short and firing a Yorker. Oh, he goes again. Unusually played again from Stokes. He's definitely inside his head. I've never seen Stokes play the short ball like this ever. I think it's to do with his knee. I think he gets in certain uncomfortable positions to duck. So he's almost got to sway out the way. That being said, then he might be better off going over the wicket. Go over the wicket and use the angle back into his body. See if he can get him jumping across to the offside. Two balls left in the day. Reprieve for Duckett. England have a good partnership here. 69. Can they get to close? a beauty two very fine all-rounders going at each other it looks like he's just getting that moving down the slope as well and away from the outside edge of Ben Stokes it's good hostile fast bowling this Let's that go outside leg stump. A surreal day at Lords. It really was. It started fairly normal, but throughout the day there's been some unbelievable cricket. 98% short balls in the second session. Lion hobbling on. And right at the end, controversial non-dismissal in the end of Ben Duckett, which will be discussed. But Stokes is there, and Ben Duckett is there, and with them, England have hope. That only tells you half the story today. Nathan Lyon hobbled on at one stage. Three wickets, five wickets, four wickets. Morning, Ricky. How do you see it? Price up the game for us. Yeah, good morning, Athers. Good morning, everyone. I'm just excited, like everybody else, to, to be here and see how this day unfolds. We saw some indifferent cricket yesterday, it would have to be said. This short ball barrage continued again, as it has done for the majority of this game. Already talk about 2019 with well, this man still at the crease, Ben Stokes. There's the win predictor. Australia are 85% to win, probably fair enough. They're going straight back to the short ball theory again this morning, the Australians. Well, Duckett fell to the short ball theory in the first innings, albeit for 98. And he could well have gone to it late last evening as well, had Mitchell Stark not grounded the ball in the process of making a catch. Very funny, actually, this morning down in that same corner. He was doing his fielding practice and he was getting so much grief from the crowd and he was playing up to it as well in good spirit. So well done to him. Yeah, he was uh, getting a lot of grief from the fans behind him this morning.
It was sort of an unusual action, wasn't it, at the end of it? You, you just don't see that, where a fielder doesn't attempt in any way to sort of roll their hand underneath the ball and slide with the, the back of their hand along the grass. If he had done that, obviously that catch would have been deemed to be out. Well, if you were, if you joined our coverage before the start of play, we, we looked into the issue in good, in good detail. We got Maria Rasmus and we thank him, the third umpire, for coming to talk to us, to talk us exactly through his interpretation of law 33.3, which says that a fielder has to be in control not only of the ball, but of his movement as well. And uh, as the law is written, you can quibble about the law, but as the law is written, it would be hard to argue that Maria Rasmus did not interpret that to the letter. Wait on. Not sure that interpretation would have been well received down under. No, I think once you actually understand know and hear the interpretation come from the umpire then i think all we can do is actually accept it because he's, he's actually made the right decision i mean the argument would be from the most one-eyed australians me probably being one of those <laughs> is that mitchell stark probably felt that he was in control of his movement and I, I actually think that might have been the reason he didn't roll underneath it because he he'd felt he was in control he wasn't staggering or stumbling i think he felt that he was in total control of his movement I suppose the point that Maria Rasmus made was that if he'd have slid into the boundary rope, then runs w would be given. And it, the control only comes when he's completed his movement. And by that stage, the ball has clearly hit the ground. It was a very dramatic end. It was about uh, three overs to go before the close of play and, and would have been a real hammer blow for England had Duckett fallen at that point. Oh, now that's a good shout, is it? Just seemed to tail back in at Stokes. No uh, review from Australia, 115 for four. That's why they didn't review a clear inside edge. One and a half, two. Well, Stark and Cummins, it will be, and I think that's fair enough. They were. The two best bowlers yesterday, obviously Australia have got Hazelwood and Green who can keep the pressure on whichever tactic Australia go to, whether that's hammering out a length or indeed the short ball ploy, which will come at some stage today, but Cummins and Stark were exceptional yesterday. Yeah, we chatted about this in the zone this morning, actually, Ath, how we thought Australia would start. I felt if there was a little bit of cloud cover like there is, they might start with more conventional fields. You see the the three slips that are pretty evenly spread. They're covering as much ground as possible. Yes! Just to see if there is a hint of movement with this ball this morning. You can see Labashane's working hard on it there. It's into its 33rd over. One of the characteristics of this Duke ball is it does tend to swing for a lot longer periods of time. You see, you've got a nice shine on that ball, actually, there. See so the new... ICC ruling is no saliva is now allowed to be placed on the ball, so it's it's all sweat. And you'll see it in Labuschagne there, shining with the, the sleeve of his shirt, trying to keep any moisture off his palm of his hands off the ball. I like this angle actually. If this if this is going to be the short ball theory, I like this angle to Stokes. Late last night, he looked to be a little bit, a little bit lame on that left knee. He wasn't moving around the crease as he normally would when he's sort of trying to evade the short ball. And I also like the fact that they've got the short legs. I, 
He just sort of turned his body into a few in the first innings, took his eyes off a few late last night. I think with the two men being out on the hook, he's having second thoughts about playing that particular hook or pull shot. Yeah. Well, it's a sellout in one or two spare seats at the moment, but all the tickets are sold out for day five, and those who bought day five tickets well in advance have been rewarded. It should be a, a cracking day's play ahead. thing the catch or non-catch did do was take away some of the focus on the shot that Duckett played and he was speaking to Owen Morgan this morning saying that as he was walking off he was thinking to himself what have I done so he got that reprieve and that'll be in the back of his mind I'm sure we heard Owen Morgan do an interview with Ben Duckett this morning talking about success he's had here here at Lords was there any particular reason why and after this ball I'll just take it back to that last delivery Wait on! what Duckett had to say was in this particular innings although he scores a lot of his runs square of the wicket the way he's actually thinking about his batting he's thinking about scoring straight first and then reacting to wide balls well there's one there where he hasn't done that straight away all he's thinking there he's hitting this square and it was nowhere near wide enough and he had to adjust late I absolutely love that thought. You set up, set up to score all of your runs down the ground. Think about hitting the, the ball down the ground. And when you've got width, you then react to that. I think if you start thinking about hitting the ball square first, that's when you chop the ball back onto your stumps. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's a, a good example of Duckett scoring down the ground. It's not where he scores most of his runs, but he can do. 118 for four. out on the pitch with NASA this morning it actually looks a, a very good day five surface bit of wear and tear as you'd imagine at the ends you no know, Nathan Lyon of course but in days gone by when I remember fifth day pitches here they would often crack they'd get very hard very dry and crack up and became very difficult with some uneven bounce but you can't see many cracks on this surface it still looks certainly in the guts of it a good pitch You can probably understand why both the ends are in pretty good condition because they haven't been used. It's been the middle of the wicket that's been used right the way through the game. We've seen so many short balls. Well, that, I think that's that's about 460-odd bounces that have been bowled this game. It's remarkable. Most of any game in ball tracking history. And the other fear that I've got is this might happen more and more through the series as well because... So far, any ball been pitched shorter than 10 metres, 14 wickets have fallen, an average of 17 in this game. Neither team have coped with this. It might be around for a bit longer yet. Clipped away behind square. First boundary of the morning, first roar of the morning. He was looking to recreate the, the the ball from the, la the last ball of his last over actually just getting one to nip back down the slope it's just a little bit straight strong there Ben Stokes just helps it on its way in the middle of the bat finds the gap Start, but it tailed in right onto the meat of the bat. Consecutive boundaries. Yeah, that's a better shot. 
actually checked the shot here just before impact. It's like a punch straight back down the ground. Good stride into the ball. Good full face of the bat. And you'll see him just check it right at the end. Bang, just punch. No real follow through. Beautiful shot. We talked about the wicket looking so good. I think it's one of the reasons that both teams have gone to this the short pitch bowling stuff. There's been nothing on offer. Obviously with Australia losing Nathan Lyons as well early in the game, it's meant that they've had to operate with their fast bowlers for the majority of the time. And with the exception of some, some really good swing from Mitchell Stark with the new ball at the start of this second innings, there's been very, very little on offer for the fast bowlers with the exception of morning one. from Smith who is just around about three quarters of the way back to the fence and he does really well to just keep that down to two Duckett almost premeditating the short ball was very early into position and it's not short enough nowhere near short enough it's got to be shoulder height at least and that's a terrific piece of fielding Stephen Smith saved two you're not going to challenge batsmen that like to play that sort of shot. You're not going to challenge them unless you get the height of the delivery right. Think about his dismissal in the first innings. Up under that right armpit. Just about hip height again, and that allows Duckett a single 131 for four. cause Duckett more problems than the ones about waist height. Yeah, you can see there straight away, as soon as the height is right, he's completely out of control of the shot. That's where they need to challenge him, up there. He is going to play it, he finds it hard to sort of duck and weave out of the way. We know he doesn't like leaving balls in test match cricket. So you test out that ego. Make him play those shots. Very uh, spread. Slip cordon with Smith at first, Cameron Green second and very close and Warner at third. But they're covering probably about where, what, normally five or six slips would cover. delivery he drew his bat inside the line but I, I think as it passed it was close to the edge something there extra bounce fraction of movement away just saying to him then did you play it that or not what was that a play I missed did you did you leave it Interesting here with the configuration of the Australian slip court, and you're just talking about Arthur's. Normally, David Warner will be at first slip, Stephen Smith at second, and Cameron Green out in the gully. 
The other interesting part of that is if you look at it, Cameron Green's probably a yard or two yards ahead of where David Warner is in the gully. Played with Ian Botham a little bit, and that was a regular thing for him at second slip. He would often be ahead of where third slip would be. Boundaries to Stokes, one to Duckett now, 135 for four, NASA. Well, Ricky Ponting mentioned before a ball went down in the series, don't forget the Yorker against this England side, the way they play. We've already seen Cummins get Pope in the last game. Stark has a brilliant Yorker, and he's used it on this ground, at this end, against this batsman, Ben Stokes. We've seen a bit of tail in today already. If he can get that tail in like that, Bumper Yorker may be the way to go. I don't think we've seen enough Yorkers from start. We've seen a lot of bouncers. When Broad comes in, Bearstow, don't forget the Yorker. Yeah, it was a fantastic delivery and a really dramatic end of the wicket with Stokes just dropping his bat and booting it away. He's been involved in some moments over the years. And that will be in the back of everybody's mind today, that while he's there... England have hope. Produced a beauty to Ben Stokes in the first innings. It was the first ball of the morning, actually. But uh, so far this morning, Stokes has met him with the full face. Yeah, that was a great shot. That, that straight drive that he punched back down the ground last over. It was actually a... Mitchell Stark re corrected from the ball before. He got a little bit straight the ball before and got tucked behind square for four. He changed his line and was met by a better shot down the ground. Drill that again, but straight to Cummins this time at mid-off. And he's just kicking himself because he was trying to punch it more through extra cover to Cummins' his right side. You can see what he's trying to do here, Mitchell Stark. He's trying to get something to go down the slope. Pitching just outside off is what he's after, and then trying to get it to nip down and get back through the gate or trap Ben Stokes in front. But it's a very small margin for error. I think he's got to use the short ball along with this fuller stuff. Use the short ball early in the over, push Stokes back in his crease, and then go for the fuller one. Ah! Like that. I think it's done too much. You can see exactly what he's doing, that Yorker that NASA mentioned. There's a bit of reverse swing as well. Fairly certain that was slipping down the leg side. It just looked like it started a, a fraction straight out of the hand. Just a little bit of tail in, yeah, it's doing too much. Got one bloke up the end of the box, it's a bit chirpy at the moment. NASA is saying after putting a lovely little piece together, it's like he's got a microphone down there to the boys. Starkey, what about trying to Yorker? There it was. Great work, Nass. Yeah, just 
not quite the right line, was it? Wait on. Because of his trajectory, Mitchell starts the one who finds the bouncer tactic the hardest, I think, or at least the hardest to be accurate with for Green and Cummins and Hayeswood, who bowl from a bit taller, a bit higher. I think they find it easier. Stark doesn't. And he's much happier, I think, bowling in, a, in, in what you might call normal mode, particularly if there's a bit of reverse swing. Yeah, it's the arm path, isn't it? That's why it does get that little bit of tail. And anyone with a slightly lower arm action gets that bit more tail. You think about a Waka Yunus, Slingers, Mitchell Johnson, those type of bowlers. Oh, oh he's gone the other way. Well, he's in the game here. Big smile on his face because two balls in this over. One has tailed in, and yes, yeah, Ben Stokes showing one has gone away quite significantly. It's a conventional swing too, yeah. You can, you can see the shiny side there, it's sort of pointed down towards fine leg. Good scene, and it swung late. That's what he did so well with the new ball. And Zach Crawley was unlucky to get a tickle on one down the leg side, but what he had for Ollie Pope was just way too good. Late swing at 90 miles an hour. No! Terrific over from Mitchell Stark, 135 for four. This partnership is worth 90 now between Duckett and Stokes. Bairstow next, and then the bowlers. change to the field one slip has come out and has gone to a catching position behind square so a bit of extra cover if Cummins wants to bowl short at Duckett they've got to be shorter still they've got to get it up yeah I couldn't agree more Ath they've got to get them higher Take him out of control of the shot. Look for the top edge, fine. A bit of premeditation there from Duckett, thinking, expecting another short ball. Wasn't switched on as much as he could have been. That's the sort of height you need. That is just up under his armpit. Yes, it's the angle as well there from around the wicket that's dragging it down the leg side. He almost hooked it on its way, but I think anything between, as I keep saying, between waist and chest is a pretty easy ball to play. Wicket might be dying a little bit, but if they're going to employ this tactic, they need to get it right. They need to bend their backs. Try and get whatever they can out of this surface. Ricky, there was some comment from Nathan Lyon overnight. You just wanted to clear something up? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify some comments that were made in the commentary box yesterday. You know, when Nathan Lyon came out to bat, um, you know, Kevin Peterson was, was talking about, 
you know, the potential of Nathan Lyon getting hit in the head and what that would mean as far as a concussion substitute would mean. And now in no way at all were any of us saying that it'd be good to see Nathan Lyon get in the head and have a replacement. In fact, it was the other. It was, it was almost the worst case scenario for England was if they continued to bowl short and Nathan was hit. So I just wanted to clarify that because there has been some negative chat around this morning. Which has probably been a, a little bit unfair. And in fact, I think it was a bit of fun sort of chat, wasn't it, around the back of the commentary box first as, as far as worst case scenario for England, not best case scenario from Australia. By no means, no way at all would anyone ever hope to see somebody get hit in the head. No, and it was it was a very dramatic passage of play with Nathan Lyon hobbling down. He did unbelievably well in the end. And I think they added 15 for the final wicket, which was a brilliant effort, really, given his limitations. It's a bit of extra bounce there. Carey doesn't collect it cleanly. 137 for four. Well, there was some swing in the last over for Mitchell Stark. A bit both ways, actually, but not swinging reverse, just quite orthodox. The ball 37 overs old. That's why he's kept those catches in, those two slips, and Cameron Green at third. So they've gone back to the orthodox slip. Corden now with Warner at one, Smith two, Green the widest of three. Maybe just got a little darker, maybe a little bit more cloud cover over the ground. We've seen a, a couple just swing a little bit for Mitchell Stark in the last couple of overs. That one there just definitely straightened back down the line. They've been working hard on this ball, the Australians, trying to maximise these overhead conditions. <laughs> He's definitely got it going. First ball just started to shape away from Stokes that one coming back in and going down the slope you can see it as he holds it in his hand but at the moment it's swinging orthodox style so just look for the rough side and that's the way the ball will start to swing This is high class from Mitchell Stark. Just a little bit each way. And as a batsman as well, when you see the bowler just shaping a few away from you, you get sometimes you keep expecting it's going to happen. You get dragged across your stumps, and I think that's what Mitchell Stark's trying to do here. He's trying to drag Stokes over with some outswingers, and he'll try and straighten one back down the line and trap him in front. He had an attempt, second ball of the over. I just get a feeling that's what he's trying to do. Oh, surely close. That must be very straight, and he's given him. Stokes reviews immediately. He must feel he's hit it. If he hasn't hit it, then he's in trouble. TV umpire to director, we have a player's review for LBW. Original decision out. I've checked the front foot and it's a fair delivery. Can we start with spin vision, please? Thank you. 
if you just double check out there that it's hit the bat. Thank you, yes. Hit the bat back to Asan on field. Asan, you have to reverse your decision. It hit the bat first. Big cheer from the crowd. They were all looking at the big screen, and the moment it cannoned in off the inside edge, they knew that their captain was safe. Stokes knew it immediately. It didn't take him a second to review. But his danger here, Stark's got it moving and bowling quickly. Okay. Fantastic uh, left arm swing bowling this from Mitchell Stark. And keep an eye on which way he's holding it. I think he was holding this one for the outswinger. Yeah. And as a batsman, you'll be absolutely looking eagle eyed to try and give yourself a clue which way he's swinging it. Just late movement, wasn't it? I must admit, with the naked eye, I thought that actually hit him on the full. It sounded like it thumped into his foot. Got a good piece of it. But... It does go straight up as immediately he realizes he's been given out here yeah, straight away. Didn't even look around, he just waited for the crowd. And then this is the one that I think Stark might look to come back into him now. Couple of out swingers in a row now get one to straighten back down the line at the stumps. Yep. Well, that's excellent bowling from Mitchell Stark, but Stokes survives 138 for four. Half now gone. England need 2 3 3. Australia still needs six wickets and they've just got it swinging. So much a better game when there's a bit of lateral movement, unless you're an England fan and batter at the moment. See off Stark. They've still got two other seamers that can come in. question Cummins has to ask himself is how many does he give Stark up front this morning because he is hooping it but keep him going while it's swinging he's bowled beautifully he really has with the new ball and now with the older ball quick full shape the height that Ricky Ponting was asking for the bouncer. It's a short ball wickets to back up Ricky Ponting's point. Everything around about waist to chest is easy or easily played. Anything head high is the one that's getting the wickets. So you're going to have to bend your back. It's a pretty slow pitch now. That's your target.
Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're Australian or if you're English, uh, but if you just love Test match cricket, this is wonderful to watch. One of the best left arm swing bowlers, seam bowlers in the world running into other English batters that are trying to make it count. You've got the Australian spectators, you've got the English spectators clapping every single run. The fields are changing, it's a full house. That's the height of the played Ben Stokes. It has been a completely different Ben Stokes. If you think of Stokes last year, think of Stokes in the winter charging down the pitch. This is old Ben Stokes sending a message to his team. Yeah, play attacking. Yeah, entertain, but be ruthless. Some of their batting, we see a no ball there from coming. Some of their batting hasn't been ruthless. On the pitch, just as I said, he hasn't charged, he does charge. And he just opens the face, I think Cummins might have seen him go early. And he'll take the boundary with a smile. Yeah, it's quite an interesting atmosphere here in the ground. It's not often that the crowd is as into every single run at the start of play as they are at the moment. They know how big this chase is, they know that Ben Stokes is the man for England. And the Australians also know that uh, Ben Stokes is such a big wicket, cheering every run. 100 partnership now between these two left-handers. No. Solid behind that last ball, 147 for four. The dials moved about 5%. Australia were 85% at the start of play. Stokes has been stuck down Stark's end. Now Stark's got it swinging, he's going to go possibly fuller, the field is still set for sure, he'll mix it up, bumper Yorker maybe. Yep, a little bit more. And that was with the new ball yesterday, that 1.1, so more here, they've got a nice shine on one side. Long discussion, shall we pitch it up? That's held for an in-swinger. Duckett has been very impressive this entire test match. Went flashing outside the off stump in Birmingham, but he's been a lot tighter. Ricky Ponting talked about the interview that he did with Owen Morgan a little bit earlier where he talked about playing straight and looking to play straight. And that just brings in that shot, actually, he says. Makes him play square of the wicket much better when he's looking to play straight. Looking to use the full face of the bat. You're caught playing square, thinking square, your feet can be on the back foot, you can be stuck on the black back foot and not play brilliantly forward. But it's been a big change, a remarkable change. And and it's worked so far for Ben Duckett. 66 to go with his 98.
Just how he sets the batter up, the left-handers. Swing out, swing it doesn't really show you that much. There's a good mix in there. You can see those full deliveries right underneath Stokes as well. That's another setup. Length, 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 and then the Yorker. away and it goes behind square fielder does well and Stokes just stays on one well fielded Travis head so important for England just to keep the scoreboard rolling along not to get stuck the more Ben Stokes bats the more Duckett plugs away and gets himself closer to a hundred Australia will be worrying the more the crowd will start to lift. Thirty-five runs have been scored already. This one. First forty minutes of play. Not a bumper bowler, is he, Mitchell Stark? Nass. Much better attacking the stumps, that line, that length, really swinging the ball, seeing that to Ben Stokes. It's as if he's not as comfortable running in, just bowling the bumper stuff. Yeah, I think that's because he's slightly round arm, whereas if you think of Cameron Green and Cummins, they come right over the top. It's a little bit more round arm, so he's got to be really short. That's why his Yorker is his delivery. Struggling to get it up high again. The fielding's good. Australia's ground fielding from Smith and Head has been excellent. 150 for four. cheer from the crowd and you think you have to factor in the crowd here what happened at Headingley four years ago and the crowd and how they got involved as you went through the day which Baston last week was a completely different atmosphere it's if if it's a massive if still if England can take this deep they'll need some home support First change going to be Cameron Green. He, out of all the bowlers on the Australian side, has made the short ball look the hardest to face. He's the tallest, and it's come off at different paces. He needs to get his foot behind the line, but also the short ball ploy with him is another obstacle you're going to have to overcome. I wonder when Duckett's on strike, if they can bring Smith in 20. Duckett at the moment just tapping it on the head and getting a single. If Smith comes in, A, that gives him the option for the catch. B, it might make Duckett take the bigger option of going over him. At the moment, for both of these, Smith is hovering three quarters of the way back. a very good point because it does look very easy for Ben Duckett to just swivel and he's very comfortable swiveling I've not seen anything this morning that resembles any real outright pace we may see that now from Cameron Green because he is taller and he is more straight straight arm compare it to Mitchell Stark but it brings in that element of doubt and that's what you want to try and create in the batter has a big hook at that one. Smith goes past him. Stark again, another divot from him. More good fielding from Australia. Every single run. Prepare the divots. A hollow turf here at Lords. Good job, Mitchell Stark.
pulled hard. To Smith, that will be 50 for the England captain. He loves this sort of occasion, he loves this sort of run chase. He's done it a number of times. 50 of 99 deliveries. Yep, very, very good from Ben Stokes. The leader, and he's leading by example, playing the situation. Nothing looks too difficult for him this morning. Nothing looks too difficult for England so far. That's where he needs to bring Smith up to. 155 for four. Twelve hundreds and now twenty-nine test fifties, and that's how he got there. Just a swivel and hits it off his hip. Comfortable. They'll be comfortable in that dressing room while their skipper's in the middle. Loves a run chase, loves a run chase against Australia. 300s, 350s. Nearly double his average in a run chase. Second change, it's going to be Josh Hazelwood from the nursery end. He hasn't seen that, Steve Smith. And it goes past him. Duckett playing that pull shot perfectly so far. Doesn't look like uh, on day five here at Lords. This should be the tactic and it should be the ploy. Looks like it's just standing up and just waiting to get hit. That's why I'd have a man catching. Yes. Kev. That three quarters is too deep. You'd have him in 20. Then he has to try and hit it up. I'm with you because the last ball of the previous over was exactly the same. Wide given. If you look at the replay of the boundary and watch where it lands, Smith is 30 yards deeper than this. Round about there, have a catcher, and then he has to try and hit it above him. Just looks different though today, doesn't it? Doesn't look like there's that two pace nature. It just looks like there's it's just one pace, it's slow, and the batter's able to ride the ball. Not seeing a batter get into an issue yet this morning. No, you're right, it just looks slow at the moment. Hazelwood might get into his work a little bit and find some rhythm. the pitch yeah. knocks it for a single
he was waiting for that. He was going outside off to play it. Well, it's been the way Australia have gone about their business and the way England went about their business most of yesterday. So why not wait for it? What about spin? When does spin come into play in this? Yeah, Travis Head has bowled pretty well. Obviously, no Nathan Lyon, and, and it might make Stokes do something silly and go after him, and it might get you a wicket. That's why today is so important. If, it's a big if, England get something out of today, and then a heading leap, no Nathan Lyon for the rest of the series, probably. Fine, very comfortable with the short ball at the moment. 163 for four. England going well, going really well, these two. Without much concern apart from a couple of in-swinging Yorkers to Ben Stokes from Stark. Australia searching for their first wicket of day five, 208 more England need. there they have changed it Smith has come up catching that's a good change Smith has come in 30 yards yeah and that's saying this because now Ben Duckett cannot just tap it away into the leg side because right now he's thinking about Steve Smith and he's standing there as a batter and he's got a square leg he's got a backward square leg he's got a deep square leg and a fine leg so he's thinking, if I just tap it on the head, get it wrong, it goes to Smith. The game has to change. And he has to probably change the way that he plays. It's very good, this from Australia. This new theory of bowling, umpires have to be really switched on. That must have been close to a wide on height. Ben Duggett, Duggett is not a tall man. It's a difficult one standing at square leg, but you're going to have to keep on the height every ball. Wait on! Smith again, and it keeps Duckett on strike. He has to put the ball harder. He has to try and real show that intensity to try and keep it down. So if you get it, badge height, that brings Mitchell Stark in down at fine leg. Definite change in the way that he has to play the ball now. Yeah, good from the umpires. They, they've got to keep an eye on this. Firstly, Hamney for the over, that's two. Secondly, the height. Every run valuable here today. I thought earlier in the over he got away with one, Cameron Green. Overhead eye is a wide, and that's way over. changes because he's bowled his two for the over so he's not allowed another above shoulder height only allowed two bounces and over no run! the 
thing is, if umpires are really sharp on that call too, it stops every single delivery being short, which means that the bowlers have to be smarter when they use it. If you use it too early, now Ben Duckett knows he can't play the short ball, can't be another short ball, being a little bit more committed on the front foot. It's nicely punched away, off his hip. He loves playing at this ground, he hasn't played here much, but he's got a test under an 80, he's got a 98, and he moves to 79. It's the area that he likes, Ducker, just off the hip. He's able to just hit this away because Steve Smith moved to a leg gully at the request of the bowler. Captain listened to the bowler, Steve Smith goes to a leg gully, and just where Steve Smith was, the delivery crosses the ropes. Good from Duckett and England, 168 for four. Bright sunshine, it was uh, completely blue skies earlier this morning. The clouds have just rolled in, but no threat from the weather all day. Watch it, he did. the pitch on fine I think it's Kawaja out there he'll cut it off he does it'll be a couple I'll go back to it again. It's very important to keep that run rate going here from England. You don't want to be bogged down and think we're not scoring. Where can our next run come from? So what Ben Stokes is doing here is he's being calculated. It's not risky. Running down the wicket, playing straight, using the offside. Got their tempo spot on in this Absolutely. whole innings. It's a template for the future, really. They've got it spot on. He may have to put his foot down. Duck it might. Bairstow later. At the moment, the tempo is perfect from England. This is what they've been about. I think some of them got carried away with the hype.
pitch. Yeah, it's good again. It's controlled. He's not coming down the wicket to slog him over mid on. Just making Josh Hazelwood think about his lines and his links. Ben Stokes is out there. Australia will be thinking very, very hard. The balcony will be thinking very hard. Coming down the wicket, his head's fairly still. Straight bat. Defensive shot. Tried the Yorker. Just got the radar slightly wrong. 170 for four. Australia will know that England have got a reasonably long tail. It was Broad, Robinson, Tongue, Anderson in that order. It could be Robinson, Broad, who knows? But that will keep them going. But Broad's coming in. Broad will have his pads on now. Again now, this is important for the batter and also for the bowler to be thinking about that wide call or the one for the over call. First of six. Wait on. What is going through the batsman's mind is please bowl those two very early. Then the whole over becomes completely different. Good running, excellent running. Drop and run on the offside. Yeah, very good. Very, very good. He goes to 80, Duckett. Hasn't been a short ball. It's gone over the shoulders of the batters in the first three. So now Ben Stokes knows that Cameron Green has a couple of times that he can go at him above the shoulders and bowl the bumper. So the more you keep that anticipation going with the batter, the more chance you've got of keeping his feet. Get him in out, LBW. It's under 200. Again, tip and run. Nearly that Ben Stokes World Cup final moment had exactly the same end. Didn't go all the way this time. <laughs>
exactly the same end, but it went for four. Anyway, first job done for England. They get to drinks without losing a wicket. 174 for four. So the first hour and a bit has belonged to England here on day five of this Lord's Test match. 60 runs on the first 14 overs today, and England have moved on to 174 for four. They need, they need another 197 for victory for Australia, and they need six wickets. Here's Nasser Hussain. Mark, we had a lot of surreal, dramatic moments yesterday. Nathan Lyon coming out to bat, but right at the end, we had the Ben Duckett moment. I'm going to show you and listen in as well to the reaction of players, commentators, everyone on this moment. I don't know what you made of it all. Ben Duckett's fault, all of it. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got to say, I can, it's certainly not Ben Duckett's fault. He said I was already off, wasn't he? <laughs> I, I was happy to go. Um, Pro Mitchell Stark, he's looking for anyone to blame. There was, then he, I think he had a go at the umpires on the way off also. It wasn't them, they gave him out. It was uh, Maria Rasmus who needed to find. Uh, what I made of it was, I think at the end of the day, the right decision was made. I don't know if it's the the absolute right outcome there's no doubt Mitchell Stark hung on to that catch but he hadn't uh, absolutely controlled his movements that was the problem here's Hazelwood yeah it hadn't completed the catch by absolutely controlling his movements and there's no doubt he put the ball on the ground to help control his movements having hung on to the catch I think there's certainly an issue going forward for the, maybe the MCC Laws Committee to think about, um, you know, in, from a safety point of view, do we want to allow that in the future? Just to, so a bowler down on, the, on a boundary line near a fence can actually use the ball to stop himself from sliding into a fence. Here's a chance. Cummins. Oh, it goes the other end. Thought just for a moment he was a chance there, Pat Cummins at mid on. It was a hit and run, and I think Ben Stokes may have hit it just a little harder than he thought he did. Afternoon to Owen Morgan. Afternoon, Mark. Did he go to right end? That's the question. I think Ben Ducker was home and safe. Stokes' end might have been the end to throw at. There's no doubt he's carrying a few little niggles, isn't he, Ben Stokes? He's probably got a sore toe also from today, from a 
LBW decision, but he, he still gets around pretty well. And pulls again. This is in a gap. Oh, but Travis Head does well. He'll keep it to two. Thought for a moment he might have found a very small gap in the deep. Yeah, good fielding, Travis Head. It's very controlled this morning, Ben Duckett. Balance of aggression, followed by great execution. Glove, oh, well taken. Carey again. Boy, he's having a good series. He actually stood down the leg side for that ball. Hazelwood delivered the perfect bouncer down the leg side. He's gloved it, and Carey, well, he went up at the right time, got the timing of the jump absolutely perfectly. A wicket Australia needed desperately. Oh, what a catch. What a beauty from Alex Carey. Excellent bowling from Josh Hazelwood, and he gets the breakthrough. The big wicket of Ben Duckett. Plays well for 83. England 177 for five. Big uh, round of applause, everyone's on their feet here. Terrific innings, that. Here comes Johnny Bairstow. This is another big moment for me. I was looking at the scorecards from this new era of English cricket, and he's been the real star in these run chases. I think 300s, 250s in the first four games of this Ben Stokes, Brendan McCullum era, that's what I'm going to call it. This is not basketball, this is good test cricket. And this guy here has been the star in that. Lots of runs, runs at, at good pace. Yeah, so Johnny Bairstow comes in, England 177 for five. Target still 371. Alex Carey, he's having a terrific series with gloves. Have a look at Carey there, he's just on the leg side. Not where you'd normally expect him, and it goes straight to him, and he takes it brilliantly. You see there, he's, he's where he'd be for a right-hander. Duckett can barely believe it. Besto, face Hazelwood. Attacks, attacks the stumps. We might see a little bit more orthodox cricket here for a while as Bairstow tries to find his feet. It really was excellent thinking from Alex Carey. Standing down the leg side. Traditionally, as a wicketkeeper, you'll try and cover the batter's outside edge, but what a grab. And now this is a big moment in the game. England still need 194 more runs. Five down. Bowlers to come. That's the other thing. There's no Moen Alley in this side. So no Chris Roach down the order. Yes, Broad's got some runs, but a lot of bowlers to come. 177 for five. Cummins has come straight into the attack here. I think this is more so about Johnny Bairstow. So Australia have gone back in front. Well, they've been in front, should I say, but by a bigger margin on that win predictor. Back up to 89%. But 
The Australians will know there's still a lot of cricket to be played here. Stokes, there's no doubt this bloke believes they can still win. Johnny Bairstow, he's sort of used to this situation. Backs to the wall, needing a couple of hundred runs. He'll be thinking, I'll get these in 35, 40 overs. I think Australia will mind that stage. They want Cummins to bowl to bear start. And I was just about to say, I'm, I'm on commentary when uh, Australia came to bowl after the drinks break that I, I thought that Australia got carried away with the short stuff to Ben Ducker. I suppose they'll look back and they say they've got him out hooked in both innings, but he's made 98 and 83. When it was swinging earlier today, particularly Mitchell Stark, I, I was surprised Australia didn't disband that theory for a while and go at the stumps a little bit more when it was swinging. In the end, they've got him, yes, but I thought they just missed a trick in the first hour. That was the time to, I think, pitch up a little bit more. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Mark. How many times have we talked about conditions here at Lords when the ball is swinging or seeming? We need to take advantage as we see the field set by Pat Cummins to Johnny Bairstow. I think we're going to see line in length, traditional test match lengths. Try and pose questions to Bairstow's defence early in his innings. He's away. Johnny Bairstow. Surprised how deep Labuschagne was there. It's another area the game has changed these days. This seems to be easier to get a single to get off the mark these days than it used to be. Captains right across the world seem far more comfortable in giving away a single to save potentially a boundary. I always think when you're on zip naught in a test match, probably any game, you're just nervous. As an opposition player, I'd be thinking keep them on strike, keep them on zero as long as you possibly can. Well, that's a wide. Surely that's a wide. No, he's got away with that. I'm not sure how Ben Stokes is supposed to reach that one. Just a wry smile from Stokes. See how far over his head this is. Oh. Quite sure how he plays a, a shot at that. Oh, it's a good line there. Just running it down the hill a little bit to Stokes. He loves these situations, doesn't he, Ben Stokes? He, he should. He could. He should probably be playing for Australia. He comes from New Zealand. He, He's closer to us than he is to here. He lives for days like today. Loves the big stage. World Cup final 2019. T20 World Cup final 2022. Headingly 2019. No coincidence he took centre stage. Loves taking on responsibility. 179 for five. Seems to thrive in the big moments and drags people with him. Brilliant leader, like any good captain, similar to Pat Cummins. Goes towards big moments or danger in the game. Leans in when his team needs him. And teammates follow. Yeah, Stokes always seems fairly relaxed to me. I, I, I suppose when you think about it, in a situation like this, when you're big behind in the game, you, you can be a bit more relaxed because the expectation to win is not necessarily there at this stage. Yep. Shot. Up the hill. Nicely timed, though, from Bairstow. Probably just go to the rope.
is really well controlled from Johnny Bairstow. Doesn't try and over hit it. Touch Fuller on his pads. Nice balance there. There's no doubt that Hazelwood's trying to target the stumps. He's looking for that front pad for an LBW. Just in there. He's a little bit quicker from Hazelwood on that occasion. It found an inside edge, but that's the plan from Hazelwood. Target that front pad and hope to catch Bairstow just falling over momentarily. Watch this one here. He's trying to swing it in. Just catches the inside edge of the bat. Probably needs that to be a little bit fuller. Oh, and pass the outside edge. I'll just try and have a look at that ball to see if, if it's reversing a little bit at the moment. That seemed to go up the hill, that ball. Looking for the shiny side. Yeah, it's going towards that darker side. A little bit of reverse swing there, I suspect. Also got a lot to do with his wrist positioning there, Josh Hazelwood right behind the ball, almost coming from mid-on. Right nice play at the end. Very soft hands. Suppose the other option for Australia will be when do they try their spin bowls? Manus Labuschagne there, we might see him bowl a few leggies. Travis Head, I, I saw him warming up this morning, bowling from the pavilion end in warm-ups, which I'd like to see him do, particularly if Stokes are still there. So he'll get a bit more turn spinning the ball down the hill. On. 185 for five and Nasser Hussain's with us again. Yeah, I just want to know from a couple of captains that attention to detail and cunning plan from Australia and Kerry. Where did it come from? I'm going to show you the ball before and you can see the ball before he is way outside the off stump there and then suddenly he goes leg side for the dismissal. There he is the ball before. Would he have set the plan or would the bowler have set the plan a, a couple of balls before at the start of the over? You can see there's no signal. No one said anything to anyone. And then Carey just decides to stand down the leg side himself. He goes up there. Hazelwood hasn't really looked. Even now he's not looked at the end of his mark. And Carey's the person that decides to stand down the leg side. Oh, Ooh, that's a nasty one. As Pat Cummins can do, it just gets one to bounce kick every now and then. I think it's might have got him on the elbow. Yeah, this looked like it hurt. Oh, back of the elbow. That's the last thing Australia need to do, I reckon, to Ben Stokes. It just seems to fire him up. The more he gets hit, the more injuries he has, the better he plays. He tucks that away for a single. It's going back to NASA's point about the um, you know, who, who would have set the uh, the, the field settings. I think you're right. I think it might have been just Alex Carey stands down the leg side, but you you've got to show him a bit of faith in your bowler. If he runs in and doesn't see it, then it's going to be really bad if he bowls a length ball wide of off stuff, and you're 
you're loitering down the leg side. Well, my point is, is Carey telling Hazelwood what to bowl? Or is Hazelwood already told Carey, second delivery, stand down the leg side, I'm going to bump him? Well, it's interesting. I, I'm sure, obviously, Hazel looks up and sees him down the leg side and, and thinks, all right, that's where I've got a bowl. No! The other thing to note from your replay was that Ben Duckett actually looked around down to fine leg. So I don't know if he saw Kerry down there or not. The other thing, we've had a couple of tweets in for some clutching England fans that says that should be three fielders down the leg side. <laughs> <laughs> now, hang on a minute. <laughs> He was LBW yesterday for five, not out on review. He's been caught down at fine leg on 50 and been reviewed. So he's three digs for 83. How many more chances do you want? Bring him back in. No! Yeah, now that would be clutching at straws. I don't know about you guys, but wouldn't be the first bowler I've seen that couldn't set his own field or didn't really pay attention to what was going on. But it was very clever, smart work from Alex Carey. Accurate bowling from Hazelwood. Yep. That's away, that'll be four down the hill. Didn't quite middle that, Johnny Bairstow, but he kept it down. That was the key. 190 for five. He's a good Johnny Bairstow. Picks up length very quickly. Manages to control it down, just roll his wrists through the ball. Two back on the hook now. Bearstow. Oh, a bit of a waft. Side off stump. No real commitment there from Bearstow. 190 for five. England have gone past the halfway mark, they a further 181. Australia are right on the halfway mark, need five more wickets. Another great test match. First one was absorbing right to the end, and you're sort of suspecting this is going in similar vein. Stokes is the key. Just for uh, our Australian viewers, that these two put on 179 last year. At uh, Trent Bridge, I think it was, and they chased down 299 in 50 overs. That's why there's a lot of hope in England that these two could still get them there. Broad, Robinson, Tongue, and Anderson to come. That's the worry for England. That tail is long. Just even that one there looked to me like it just. Straightened a little down the line of the stumps. More of the in-swing up to the left-hander. Yeah, definitely go through a period of play. Where Australia are giving the ball a chance to swing. We've seen so much short-pitch bowling throughout this test match. And it's very difficult to keep the ball in good enough condition to allow it to swing. Australia firmly focused on good line and length with the odd bouncer at the moment. Nicely played again. Happy to take the single. You can see, you can already see with Ben Stokes. He he's thinking about. I just want to be here at the end of the day, or the end of the game. Win, lose, or draw. I want to be here at the end. 
So it's up to probably Johnny to be more the aggressor here, which he is his natural game anyway. He likes to hit boundaries. He likes to get on with the game. And at the moment, Ben Stokes would be more than happy just to play second fiddle. That's the one. That's the one, the, the in-swinger. bit hard to tell which was the shiny side on that occasion it's a bit of a, a scrambled seam delivery Still a very good pitch to bat on. There's been a lot of tricks, nothing, a little bit of uneven bounce, but if, if anything, the bounce has just got generally lower. We haven't seen the balls fly through as much today as we did probably yesterday. No! 191 for five. Target 371 for England, 180 more they need. Bit of a lull at the moment around the ground. England started very well. No wickets in the first hour and ten minutes. Straight after Brinks though, trying to get the breakthrough. Now Stokes focused in. up there crossword or something he does this a lot Ben Stokes doesn't he it almost seems he makes a decision just to go into a bit of a holding pattern think, think back to that famous victory for England four years ago at Headingley I think he was something like two off about 50 balls to start the innings and in the end he, he probably made his last 50 off about 15 balls he almost goes through this period where he thinks okay I'm just not getting out now but then he'll go through the gears very quickly if he needs to yeah. Yeah, I think that's his strength in many ways Toby recognizes danger or pressure how to soak it up how long it will be before it passes Johnny Bairstow only facing 15 balls. The partnership is 15. There it was. What a moment. 2019, Headingley. Stokes hasn't hit a boundary for more than an hour. That emphasises how important he thinks this period of play is for England. Set things up in this session to give them the best chance later on. Like you mentioned earlier, Toby, no Mo and Ali, no Chris Wokes. There's not a lot of batting to come.
Well, bear in mind, it was Jack Leach, wasn't it? He put on 76 for that last wicket. There we go, 115 here at Lords in the second innings of that corresponding test match four years ago, and then the 135 at Headingley, where he put on that 76 run partnership with Jack Leach, who made one in 60 minutes, 17 balls, one vital run. No! 192 for five. Another bowling change here for Australia. Won't be the spin, though. Cameron Green back into the attack while a short spell from the pavilion end earlier today. Just used, generally used in short, sharp bursts. As I said, I'm surprised we haven't seen someone like a Travis Head yet. I, I suspect that particularly Johnny Besto will be looking to get after him. Round the wicket, three in the deep on the leg side still for the for the hook shot. There's Travis Head there out of deep square leg. Going to stay just in front of square. There he is. Just in front of that, that, that line of that popping crease. There's two men further to his left. A top edge hook. Gets it in straight to that man, Travis Head. Nicely controlled. I suspect we're going to see this tactic from both sides throughout this series if we continue to get some pitches without a lot of life in them. Saw Australia use it well in both innings at Ed Edgebaston here. They've, they've used a lot. Saw so England used it almost predominantly yesterday. Was it 98% of short pitch balls in that middle session yesterday? To me, that's a bit of a worry because I don't think we want hours and hours of this sort of test cricket. I Speaking to a few of the putters here in the crowd, both Australia and English, I think people were, by the end of sort of about tea time yesterday, they'd seen enough of it. If you look at the field, it's, it's the reward for the risk is the problem. With three out in the hook and two down at well, deep backward point and deep third, it makes scoring very difficult if you're bowling short balls all the time. Eventually, you tend to get a top edge on one and you're out. So to get a single, it's not worth the risk. So therefore, you end up with a stalemate. That's that's the worry for, me, for mine. As I said, I hope the umpires are vigilant in the next test match and maybe even the match referee. Just have a word to both sides. So we're going to be very mindful of wides. Negative bowling for short stuff down the leg side. Intimidatory bowling, we're just going to keep an eye on it so that the game doesn't drift or slide into a lot of short stuff and a, and a stalemate. Yeah, I've no doubt that they'll continue to monitor proceedings as there's a change in the field. Deep square comes into short leg and the extra man is put out just in front. I think that's down to Bairstow. Not looking to take it on at the moment. See, I just wonder, see, to me, I, I'd love to see Cameron Green try one at the stumps now. Now, mid-on is vacant. Straight down towards our camera position there. Big gap there. But if he can get one just to dip back in, he's a chance of a wicket there. Oh. 
It's another short ball. Oh, now, this is going to be interesting. Johnny Bairstow's walked out of his crease here. This could well be out. I don't think there was a call of over. Johnny Bairstow's ducked and then walked out of his crease. Alex Carey's just thrown the ball at the stumps and hit them. This is going to be interesting. of the umpire to director we have umpire's review for a run out uh, it's at the striker's end first side on please can you give me a side on please Roll through, please. Okay, uh, the decision for the screen. Yep, no great surprise to me. Johnny Bairstow won't like it, but to me it's a bit like uh, the Gron Holmes dis dismissal last year. The test match we saw when he hit on the pad, wandered out of his crease. I think Ollie Pope threw him out from gully. So that'll be out, run out once again. Carey involved in the game. And Besto is gone. So a double blow for, for Australia. Out for 10, 193 for six. Johnny Bairstow here ducks the ball is still active goes walking down the wicket and his run out smart work by Carey Australia have got the sixth interesting to keep an eye on, on Carey here as well he doesn't wait for him to walk out of his ground he is throwing the ball as Johnny Bairstow is getting up he walks straight out doesn't look around Carey's already thrown the ball Alex Carey does not wait for him to walk out. He's going to do that regardless. And that's why it, it's, it doesn't look good and people are going to be unhappy with it, but it's the right decision. You've got to wait for the umpire to call over and then the ball is dead. That ball is still very much alive. See, watch Carey. Straight away, he's throwing that. Johnny's still in his crease there. Then he walks out. Here we go. Watch Carey here. Straight away, he's throwing that ball. A few boos ringing out around the ground that said to me it's it, it's a bit like the catch yesterday afternoon the laws of the game require players to play to the laws of the game Johnny Bairstow has to wait for that ball is dead and it was not dead now there's a big onus on Ben Stokes The two captains are having a smile about it. It's interesting watching the balls before that. He's, he walks out very quickly. And, and, and obviously Alex Carey sees that. And that one, this time he's run out. Because that ball is not dead. No call of over. It's very much a live, a live ball. Yeah, really smart right. work again from Alex Carey. In a big role, the dismissal of Ben Duckett. 
standing down the leg side, took an excellent catch. And this time, recognising Bairstow, leaving his crease before the ball is dead. Now, Broad's on strike now. He's the new batsman to Pat Cummins. Three out the hook. Back pad, a gully. Wait, wait, Bends wait. on the offside. Plays that well. So there's not quite the bounce in this pitch today. But Broad happy to stand up. Take a single, I'm not sure why. Gee. Wow. And then and then and Broad wanders out of his crease there, but it did hit the helmet, so I think the ball may well have been dead there, but wow, it's all happening. That one's hit the helmet. I'm surprised it didn't take a run. Get him off strike. It's not the first time in this test match Stuart Broad has taken a blow. First innings. Didn't catch any of the grill. Hit him directly on the chin. This time around, the helmet saves him from a second blow. Doctor will come out and run through concussion protocols. Yeah, it's the problem with him taking his eye off the ball. It happened in that first innings. Took his eye off it the ball swung his head around and therefore he's actually exposed his jaw by doing it and that the one in the first innings got him in the jaw that one still hit the cage he seems okay going back in that first innings this is Cameron oh. Green this time but because he tends to turn away all the protection is in the front of the helmet really not the side and, he, and it actually missed the grill missed the helmet got him in the jaw A nasty blow, real nasty blow that. And this is the one that just happened. Turns his head again, clips the grill this time around. Doctor has been out and returns. Broad is good to continue. He's going to get a few more, isn't he? That pad offside now as well, onside. Gully, three out in the hook. Fends it down for Cameron Green. <laughs> the crowd were already booing because of the Bearstow run out. They're not going to like this too much either. I'll have to be careful when I wander around the ground later this afternoon, I think. I think this catches oh, right under the armpit. It's better cricket when it's length. <laughs> Stuart Broad. Having a conversation with Marinus Labuschagne. Better cricket when it's length. He got some glove on that. they get a single. It's yeah, interesting. That was ball number five in the over. That's the only problem. Australia will be very keen to keep Broad on strike for the for next over. To see what the field is, is here. Six down now, England. More and more resting on Ben Stokes. Yeah, still 176 to get. He won't be able to do it on his own. It's to trust Stuart Broad, who can bat. It's going to be interesting to see what tactics Pat Cummins and his Aussie team use to try and keep him off strike. Get Stuart Broad on strike for this next over. He does well, Stokes. Works it through the gap at point. Hangs on to the strike. 196 for six.
didn't look like a particularly well-mannered conversation, that to me, between Stuart Broad and Marnus Labashain. And Stump Carey, Ball Green isn't a dismissal you'll see on the scorecard too many occasions in future years either. Oh. <laughs> it's all happening out there. Stokes tries to smear Green away, loses his bat. Well, this has been the most extraordinary test match. <laughs> Never-ending supply of extraordinary pieces of play, and this is another one. <laughs> we talk about throwing the bat at the ball. Just looking at the field, fine leg, deep backward square, deep square leg. If Green is going to bowl short, Stokes looks from that first ball as if he wants to take him on now. Having been in his shell for the last hour or so. He's going to go hard to the left side and huge cheers as Stokes pulls Cameron Green to the mound stand for four. 200 comes up for England and it's all on Ben Stokes. He goes to 68. But with this long England tail, he knows the responsibility is on him. And that's why that wicket of Johnny Bairstow was so important. It's got the crowd engaged and somewhat riled by Australia's tactics. You saw Stuart Broad was voicing his discontent as well. So a bit of zest out there right now. Stokes goes left side again. More cheers as he pulls away. Backward of square, we've seen him do this on so many occasions. He seems to have that ability to go from first gear to fifth in the blink of an eye, and he's on the charge now. Well, this is utterly captivating. The England captain standing up to the plate. He's played brilliantly this morning, Ben Stokes, alongside Ben Duckett. And now he knows it's time to press the accelerator. Yeah, he's only got Broad and Robinson, Tong and Anderson for company. So uh, the way he was playing with Duckett and Bairstow had to change because he's the one who has to score the runs. Cameron Green now back over the wicket. Short again, Stokes pulls again. But straight out to Hazelwood this time for no run. And interesting, he's refusing to take the run. I just wonder, with four wickets still for Australia to get, that seems early for him to be protecting the tail. But he might think with the boundary down the slope there, this is his best chance of getting easy runs. Well, Stuart Broad's got plenty to say at the non-striker's end. He, he was in conversation with Labashain a moment ago, and he and Cummins were going eat at each other just before that last ball from Cameron Green. England have nothing to complain about. It was a dozy bit of cricket from Johnny Bairstow. of square the crowd are up they're loving this from the England captain he moves to 76 just outstanding cricket from Ben Stokes once again Cameron Green didn't get the line right it was wide of off stump and Ben Stokes could then free his arms and hit it wide of mid on for four brilliant from Stokes he goes to 76 and only the 162 left for England to score Keeps the strike to cheers. That's smart cricket. Three pulls to the fence to the leg side and then just a calm knock behind square for the single. Stokes keeps the strike 210 for six. Well, Stuart Broad has shown how unhappy he is with Australia's tactics there. Talking directly to the Australian captain. 
And he'll be saying that's against the spirit of the game, that well-known phrase that we hear come up time and time again. The Lord's crowd weren't happy about it, that is for sure. But for me, the fact that Alex Carey picked up the ball and threw it straight away, I, I don't think there was a sort of premeditated plan from Australia, and it was dozy from Johnny Bairstow, there's no doubt about it. Absolutely. Carey just th threw the ball in. Whether he'd seen Bairstow leave his crease quickly on the earlier balls that we showed you, who knows, but... Gathered the ball, flicked it in before the umpires had, a call, had called over, so the ball was still live, it wasn't dead. And that is dozy cricket from Bairstow and costly cricket. Captain to captain now. Cummings goes short, wide ball called. Well, he's going to take the short ball on, and there are four men waiting now, leg side. Just a, a square leg and a deep gully, the only men saving one. Oh, Stan! He has hammered that back at Cummins, and for a moment, it looked like Cummins might have picked it up. It was an incredibly difficult and sharp chance, in and out. Yeah, well, so difficult to judge the pace on the ball when it comes back to you like this. Pat Cummins, as you said, after his look for a moment like he did get hands on it. No, it hit him too quickly. Well, it is Ben Stokes in full smash-out mode here. Something happening every single delivery. Captivating stuff. Good bowling from Cummins, who follows Stokes, who moved out to the leg side. It's just a, a good moment, so we've had a, a text in, or Ricky Ponte has had a text in from Simon Toff, who's a highly regarded umpire. He says the ball is not dead until both sides disregard it as being in play. Carey Corton threw it in one action, so the fielding side still considered the ball to be in play. That's fair enough, I don't think anybody has any queries with that. Stokes does opt to take the single this time. It's good bowling by Pat Cummins, as you said, after following Ben Stokes as he was giving himself width, which really means he can only hit it on the leg side where the fielders are. So smart from Cummins. Now Stuart Broad on strike. Yep, three balls for Stuart Broad to survive, and all of a sudden in comes the field. Labashane to short leg. Renshaw to silly point, Kawaja's in at gully, Smith at leg gully. No guesses for where this will be. Just got to be careful down the leg side. Nearly got a glove on it as he looked to defend his body try and keep those gloves out of the way well with 159 still needed Ben Stokes is going to need these tail enders to play their part you think about that fantastic knock he played at Headingley and on, Jack on, Leach on, surviving all those balls for one delivery we're going to need that from each of these tail enders and a bit of luck as well time no off the hip Stuart Broad making his thoughts clear to Pat Cummins once again either he wasn't happy about the appeal or it was back to the Johnny Bairstow dismissal but that, that nowhere near that one 
Just flicked his uh, sweater. Got to be careful, try and keep those gloves out of the way. A nasty ball. He's played it pretty well, actually, in the end. Bro, who, with a great show and display, keeps his bat in the crease and says to Australia, "Is the ball dead?" Well, theatre from the Stuart Broad, but that's exactly what Johnny Bairstow should have done, and that's why we're in this situation. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what Johnny Bairstow should have done. He nearly walked out, didn't he? And you wait until the ball is dead. different atmosphere at Lords to the normal kind of quiet hum that goes around the ground it's it's all on at the moment green to Stokes smashes it away straight to long on Hazelwood comes round can't stop the ball huge cheer for more well, we talk about the value of home advantage and this Lords crowd are really getting behind England here Australia starting to feel the pressure. They wouldn't have enjoyed Stuart Broad having a go at them about their tactics. And Stokes in full baseball mode. But poor fielding this. Sure that I've heard a wide greeted with such a cheer. This was Hazel with the previous ball coming round. He got his knee stuck in the turf, took a huge divot and missed the ball. When Stokes goes, he goes big. The ability to go up the gears and down the gears and remain calm. Wait for the ball, watch the ball, back yourself, and that's gone many a mile. Labashain it was for a moment, but uh, the ball flying over his shoulder and into the crowd. Short again, top edge. Mitchell start down in front of the members. He tried just to hold himself in front of the boundary edge and see if he could flick it back. Six, six, and a four in the over from Stokes. Unbelievable by Ben Stokes. Shades of Headingley again. He moves to 94. This one was very close. You see Mitchell start just waiting for it on the boundary edge. Just enough. Just enough on the ball there from Ben Stokes. And one blow away from a magnificent hundred. An epic way to go to a test match hundred. England's captain Ben Stokes, while he is there, England have hope. The team is on the balcony cheering as Stokes goes to a hundred. The Lord's crowd is up and cheering. It is the most magnificent innings from Stokes. Eight fours, four sixes, a hundred from 142 balls. England's Superman comes to the party again. 23 runs off the over. How many times can one man do it? Unbelievable by the England captain. Incredible atmosphere around this ground as Stokes now has taken 23 from the 56th over of the innings. He's taken Cameron Green for four and now three consecutive sixes 
They've seen it all before in that pavilion at the World Cup final here in 2019. We've seen it at Headingley. Will he do it again? Slower ball and calmly knocked into the leg side to give Broad just the single ball to face. Well, this is the genius of Ben Stokes. It's the calmness under pressure, it's the presence of mind, and then the brutality and the ability to go with it. He is the assassin, and Australia will be extremely worried with the, him at the crease because it all happens so quickly. Only 135 needed now, 24 off that over. Come on, here. Come on, lad. Come on, One ball to go. Remember in that uh, documentary, the Amazon Prime documentary, the test, all the Australian players were made to sit through that denouement of the Headingley game again by Justin Langer. And I wonder whether any of those lessons, if indeed there were any lessons to be learned, whether any of those lessons will be remembered now. Oh. Broad does well, keeps his gloves out of the way, 236 for six. Well, I suppose the lesson to be learned from Australia is to, to keep calm amid the onslaught. You have to have a plan, and you have to then go and execute that plan. Very hard when the crowd are getting into you, where you feel like control has been lost, to keep your composure. And so for Pat Cummins in particular, this is a test for him. Incredible how he just switches with uh, Duckett and Bairstow for company, Stokes, and when Mark Taylor was on commentary, he said he almost goes into, into a bunker and playing no shots, happy for the others to play the shots, and then suddenly, with dismissals of Duckett and Bairstow, he completely changes gear. Cummins now, captain to captain. This is going to be long run problems here for Australia. They cannot stop the flow of runs. Yeah, well, the genius of Stokes here is to get it so straight down the ground. Very, very difficult shot to play, especially when the ball is following you. All the field is set very square. And that's why he's looking to hit straight with a flat back. Okay. He wants two. Broad will hurry back for a second. Stokes keeps the strike. Just brilliant cricket, this, isn't it? It is absolutely captivating. The crowd is on the edge of their seats. Another phenomenal test match we're witnessing here. Okay. I suspect lunch will come at a good time, actually, for Australia. What is it now? Ten past one, we're four minutes away from the lunch break, and that will give them a chance just to sit and reassess. As <laughs> Terry dives forward, the crowd appeal on his behalf. Might have been a bit of a bottom edge there as well. Yeah, there was definitely a little sound as it went past the bat. Tiny little nick. Stokes just checking two things. How many balls left in the over, and that's three, and whether Cummins has bowled his two for the over, which he has. Well, it's a 50 partnership, and as we've seen in the past, it's a 50 partnership dominated by Stokes. Broad has only faced eight balls, and that solitary run, Stokes has contributed the rest. Six off 21 balls in this partnership with Ben Stokes. Quite extraordinary stuff. Australia will console themselves with the fact that once Stokes is out, there's not much to come, but that 
is a big if they take that wicket. At the moment, he looks in complete control, Ben Stokes. Yeah, and he'll be running on ad adrenaline and, and the cheers of the crowd as well. So that lunch break is going to come at a very important time. And whether he, you can quickly re-establish the same kind of atmosphere immediately after lunch. Here's Cummings, he's got two at broad. <laughs> Just looking at the field Australia got for Stuart Broad, I feel like there's a big gap there between the keeper and Gully. The way he's playing, fending it off, it could easily go into that sort of second, third slip area. I just wonder whether they don't mind him trying to have a flap at it, bring that man from deep square into the, to the third slip, floating slip area. Broad and Stokes having a conversation. One ball, I think they're trying to get through to lunch here, aren't they? Trying to waste a bit of time. Yeah, they don't want uh, Cameron Green to bowl another over at Ben Stokes because the last over bowl by Green at Stokes went for 24. And if you eat 24 more now into this target, England are barely, well, it's 100 away effectively. So Cummins is just running down the clock here. defensive stroke of the session from Stuart Broad and a, an incredible session of cricket ill-tempered at times comes to an end the crowd will rise they've seen some wonderful cricket especially from the England captain who now returns to the pavilion he's still there he's 108 from 147 balls the session has produced 129 runs and the wickets of Ben Duckett and Johnny Bairstow, controversially so, but not unfairly so. Yeah, I felt they were too predictable just before the break. Then everyone out leg side, no one straight down the ground. So Cameron Green and Coke could only bowl one delivery. The field is now spread all around this ground. He's not going to play the game when everyone's back. Because they were predictable before lunch, he was setting himself just to pull and hit for six. He may play a different game. He may wait, as he did at Headingley, until the fourth, fifth ball, and then play the big shot. The captaincy at Headingley four years ago was not where it needed to be from Tim Payne. He got it wrong. Will Cummins get it right? goes down the ground will it go all the way you bet it does it's Ben Stokes all the way and some that's gone a long way back what a strike that was full attacking the stumps and what a swing of the bat stood still just opened his right side up bang clean six more End of the bat this time. Absolutely nailed that six. It, it came right out the screws, right out the middle of the bat. And this is where we've talked as well, Nasser, isn't it, about with this whole approach of England right from the start of this series with their batting, does there need to be more T20 type bowling? Field spread all around the ground. Can Hazelwood go really wide now? Get it out on the wide line. Get it out of his swing. Try and catch the toe of the bat. That's exactly what you'd be saying a T20 game. Goes leg side. There's a man out there. Can he catch it? Oh, he's put it down. Steve Smith has put it down. History is repeating itself here. 
One of the best fielders in the world has just dropped a dolly. And that's the reason he's there. That's the absolute reason that Steve Smith is in that position. Safe hands, whether it's in the slips or in the outfield. And I must admit, when he approached this ball, he just did look a little uncertain. Didn't seem to be that well balanced. He gets there easy enough. This goes down to his knees and out it comes. How costly might that be? Now he's got to bring him up. And this is where Payne went wrong at Eddingley. He's got to bring him up. We'll look at the drop catch again, but they've all got to switch on, the Australians. 99 times out of 100, he's catching that. And you reckon if I copped it during the lunch break, I reckon he might be copping it down there at the moment. Well, explain this to me, Ricky. There's five balls gone here. What, why is everyone out? He's going to bowl a high bouncer or a wide Yorker. So two options he's got. Now, that's the only way you can, can keep him on strike. Up. You can. But if your bowl is a high bouncer, you want someone out there catching it. You can do that with the field up. 249 for six. So now they have six at broad. Who would you go with? Stark? Yeah, I thought Stark might have bowled that first over, actually, Nass. Just be, be, because of that ability to bowl the wicket-taking ball, to bowl the Yorker, not be as predictable as, as some of the right armers. But looking now, it doesn't look like it is going to be Mitchell Stark. Cummins is going to go again himself. I like that from the captain. Injecting himself straight back into the game. There's a bit happening as these teams left the field at lunch. Some chat between Broad, Cummins and some of the other players. I've never seen Lords like this. World Cup finals, and I've never seen the atmosphere as it was before lunch. Players going at each other, crowd going at players, members in the long room going at players. It was a hostile atmosphere. City point. Short leg, leg, gully, gully. In the air and just short. Smith again, it's following him. Yeah, there's definite bat on that. You hear the two noises there. Bat then onto the hip or the thigh pad. Just a few little things starting to go in one's way. Little smile on Cummins' face. Inside edge. Just caught and get there again, Steve Smith. And once again, the field spreads. Every man on the fence. Third man, deep backward point. Deep cover. Long off, not all the way back. It looks like Matt Renshaw there. Get back on the fence. Luckily for Smith, he's gone back, but he's in front of the Aussie fans at the moment. That's the only place he can be that he's not going to be booed. I don't know if I've seen a batter be able to hit boundaries as many as Stokes does with all the field out. He did it heading, he's done it today. When everyone's out, you've absolutely got to nail it, obviously for six, but also the gaps. There's your field plot. His <laughs> leg side. Yeah, it's a good point you make, Nass, because he has the ability when it's right there to actually clear and hit it for six. And if it's not quite there, he's been able to hit it flat and into the gaps. He has his sixes in this innings. A beautiful clean strikes down the ground, mid-wicket and square leg, as we, as we saw just before the lunch break. Off Cameron Green. This is an intriguing battle. Captain versus captain. Australia versus England. Head-to-head -head at Lords. Slow ball. This is Ricky Ponting's point, actually. They're a bit predictable before lunch with the short ball. They're mixing it up here. Yeah, and when you've got a... A batsman that's standing and swinging 
the wider balls are the best balls to bowl. Stokes wants something that's close to the stumps that he can launch down the ground if it's pitched up or drag to the leg side. What's, what we'll see from the Australians, as they look to close overs out, I think they'll, the two balls I talked about last over, it'll be a bouncer or it'll be something out really wide trying to catch the toe end of the bat. And maybe a glove on that. That's also a chance, a very difficult one. Very difficult one for Carey. Run given. Yeah, bottom edge or bottom of the glove. Just didn't look like he quite got full extension to this one, Carey. Yeah, glove. And it just, if anything, swung away from him. Just got away from him late. One ball left in the over. Broad nicked one past Smith. First delivery of the over. And he survived the last. Oh, yeah. Short again, in at the ribs. <laughs> Lavishade and Broad, they've been at each other. Either side of lunch, 251 for six. between them as they walked off <laughs> 120 needed plenty of time left plenty of overs no problem with the weather Four wickets needed for Australia. Goes next side, that's the shorter boundary. It doesn't matter how big the boundary is. That's almost out the ground. I don't get this bowling. I do not get it. It's a shorter boundary that side. It's down the slope. And they give him exactly what he wants. That's what he's setting up for, that exact ball. Make him hit it on the offside. Make him hit it over extra cover. There's only one place that's going. Out the middle of that big GM. It's going a long, long way over mid-wicket. He is waiting for anything short. He looks in such a good position. Absolutely smash that. You'd think Stark, bouncer Yorker with Stark. He was even just getting a bit of swing in his first spell today. They've gone Hazelwood, to be fair. Hazelwood had a, a catch dropped already. Goes leg side. I reckon that's six, it's pretty close, it is at six. This is all wrong from Australia, all wrong. He's setting up for this exact ball, it's wide down the left side, just helps it on its way. Yes, he was dropped attempting it, but that is not anywhere near high enough to be trouble for Stokes. They've got to make him hit the ball on the offside. If he hits you over extra cover for six, then so be it. The trust broad two deliveries. Well, that's what I'm talking about there, Nass. Leg side, 105 of his runs have come on the leg side. 82%. And I think it'd be a whole lot higher than that since this partnership has started between Stokes and Broad. 
And people think that's because of line, it's because of length as well. You bowl a length to Stokes, he's going to bash your leg side, especially with everyone back. So two balls, can Broad survive? He's fired up, Stuart Broad. Well, there you go. There's the point that I'm making there. That's since Bairstow's wicket fell. So that's the partnership. He's got 5% of his runs on the offside, and they're all down to third man. And you're spot on, Nass. It's all been predictable. It's all been the same stuff. It's been quite straight, and it's been back of a length, which is why so many runs have been scored on that leg side area. Broad's having a go now. Broad has smashed it as well. Four more. Another expensive over. It's down to 103. 268 for six. Got to be start time, surely. That's a super shot from Stuart Broad. Well, I did say this at the lunch break, actually, that... Once he gets in and they start peppering with that short stuff, he can actually play it. And he actually scores quite quickly on both sides of the wicket. They won't be allowed to move wherever they're sat now, unless you have to go out and bat. You stay there. It's not uh, been hit at all. Dies. We, we have talked about Headingley 2019 and how sensational Ben Stokes was that day. And there was a lot of this sort of stuff that happened as well. There, there were miss hits that sort of fell safe. There were some, some quite clean hits that just got over the guys on the fence. And it's a bit that way at the moment. Put down a deep backward square by Steve Smith. Dropped down the leg side as well by Alex Carey. That's well bowled and well played. Captain to captain. That actually just also illustrates to me, Nass, that how clearly he is thinking Ben Stokes. He was expecting that. He knew that that's the wicket-taking ball that Cummins has got up his sleeve. You see that he was setting up. He's keeping that, that right foot just out of the way, which when he does that, it frees up his swing. He can swing the ball much better to the leg side. And he does change his plan as well. He's not sort of absolutely driven on one set plan. Now he gives Broad three deliveries. Everything is on gut feel. It's looked like he wants to be more aggressive when he's batting at, at the pavilion end, doesn't it? But he's hitting down the slope and hitting to the shorter boundary. If you think about what he's doing there with Cummins, Cummins has taken the ball away from him down the slope and it's along the boundary out to the mid-wicket region. Broad way back in his crease. Oh! Bowling captain as well. Just factor that in. All the emotion, and you have to bowl, and you have to captain, and you have to make the decisions. He's going to need help. The man who usually helps him has just dropped a catch and has got issues. He's thinking about it. He's got people booing him. Smith needs to help his captain. Historically, since he's been hit, 
broader struggle with the Yorker, so don't forget that as well. Smith trying to get involved. Yeah, good shot, Nass. I think they need to target his stumps here. He's setting up for only one ball. We've seen him in the past premeditate short balls, go right back in front of his stumps and be trapped. Plum LBW. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, spot on. Well played, Stuart Broad. Good bowling from Cummins. 102 needed England, 269 for six. This place has witnessed many great occasions. This place has so much history about it. Stokes is trying to create more history at this famous old ground. 73 from the last eight, 102 needed. Still Hazelwood. the offside and then he just toe ends it and he turns down the run and that's the point I'm making this the wider you get it you bring the toe of the bat into play you bring the toe of the bat into play you're a much better chance for a catch and I'll keep saying it you got to think about t20 bowling here what's he least likely to hit bowl slow balls wide slow balls out near those foot marks there somewhere Wants to, not sure Broad's quick enough to get back. He's not quick enough to throw the wrong end. Utterly the wrong end and wide. The wheels are coming off here, Australia. Down to 100 needed. That's horrible cricket from that Renshaw. Horrible. Running in the outfield with his pads on to start with. No awareness whatsoever throws to the wrong end. Now some might say he's trying to run Ben Stokes out. But if he had to give himself a little glance up at the bowler's end before he picked the ball up, it was an easy run out at the bowler's end. That's gone leg side. They take the single. All right, come on, Ricky. From four years ago at Headingley, they were made to watch that last session again, that last day again. What would be the one thing they learn it goes under 100 it's 99 if there's one thing they would do differently what would it be that they need to do here i think they need to be more unpredictable with the way they bowl and that's what i'm i'll keep banging on about that nasa because what we've seen so far if you're predictable to stokes you let him stand there and hit he's going to hit a lot more than he misses now yes he's been put down stokes could be back in the shed this could almost be game over now if that was the case but that hasn't happened. Also got to find another way other than a short ball to get brought out. He's only faced one ball so far fuller than 10 metres. Catch! He swings and it goes over the keeper and it will go away for four. Still only one ball fuller than 10 metres. He's also getting ready for it. He's expecting it. He's waiting for it. Down to 95. Where are you, Mitchell Stark? 
picking the ball up from the members. Down the pitch, on the charge. That's a dot. Through 76 for six. changing it was up at 89 percent it's down to 61 percent still favorites australia they need stokes they need him quickly good like it something different a change of pace still a few smiles Quite a lot of concern. That's again Ricky Ponting's point by being wide. That comes off the toe end of the bat and you can't get as much distance on it. And takes your power away, right? Where are most bats more powerful? On the leg side, of course they are. 94, 95 more to win. I'd be saying to Australia, if Stokes gets all of those on the offside, well then, well done, well played. Just the couple of full deliveries, really. A couple of attempted Yorkers. Everything else has been short. Sides that bowl well to Broad have mixed it up. Bumper, bumper. He goes a long way back. And then the Yorker comes. He's even been bowled round his pads on a number of occasions. Problem is, there's no mid-off, so you are gambling a bit if you bowl full. Yeah, I'd agree with that, Nassau. I think they need a mid-off, actually. That allows them then to get fuller and straighter. It also allows you to bowl a slow ball. He's going back in his crease. He's waiting for the, the short pitch ball. It's an actually it comes a catching position at mid-off. They can use their third man. Bring the third man up. Let Broad see that gap down there. And then you can attack his stumps. He might step outside and try and hit a ball down to third man if that man's not there. Catch! In the air. Land safe. Broad stays this end. Stokes the far end. 94 needed. 277 for six.
Robinson can bat. Tongue and Anderson, you don't want to leave them too many. Raza! 15 overs to start. That's going to be made 16. Quarter to 12 was the last time he bowled. He's on now. This is a pivotal moment in the game. Stark, bouncer, Yorker. He's done Stokes on this ground with a Yorker. Can he produce his magic now? His skipper needs him. And he better be ready for the first ball. He has to be ready to bowl his best ball first up here. And the interesting thing, Nas, with me here is the left armour coming down the slope to a left-hander with a shorter boundary leg side. I would actually think he's, been, he's better used from the other end. Makes Stokes hit him to the big boundary up the slope. This is the battle. Australia's wicket taker against England's boundary hitter. A stiff ball from Stark. Straight to extra cover. He looks a bit stiff here. Mitchell Stark, maybe that's why they delayed him. decision there and they both looked at each other they weren't sure whether they were going to take a run or not yeah a lot of confusion here Stokes called yes straight away yes. really looked up at the scoreboard actually and saw that three balls are actually gone he's happy to give Broad the last couple but he got sent back One ball to survive. I think they need to start being a bit more creative here, Australia, with their fields. Need to think it through. I'd like to see all the leaders get together out in the middle now. Don't wait until they need 20 runs to win. Get together now and reset. Get their minds together. Get Smith, get Warner. 
get Hazelwood, get Cummins, get Carey, get them all together and have a very, a very clear plan as to what they're going to do. Oh, oh, he's been hit again. He's been peppered, Broad. He's showing a lot of fight, a lot of character, a lot of ticker. That's another one he's taken, another blow. 93 needed England. All round the body. Glove, bicep, chest, helmet. He was hitting the chin in the first innings. Ricky, you said get everyone together. I think the major thing they need to change Australia is they're not bowling enough deliveries abroad, as they didn't at Leach at Headingley. They need to decide after three balls, are they bringing... Let Stokes have a hit the last two balls. It might get him out. They can't just go to the fifth ball and have one, uh, one ball abroad. Leg side. Yeah, I agree, Nass. But to do that, they need to do it now when they've got enough runs in the bank still. 93 is a lot of runs needed so if they are going to gamble with those fields and bring them up a little bit earlier you have to do it now you can't do it when there's 20 runs to win so maybe three balls with the field out and then bring some of the field not all of them some and make Stokes play the really big shot or play tip and run and if he can't you have six at broad with Stark Side again. I've been definitely less boundaries hit up the hill. Seems harder hitting that way. good bowling now maybe now three balls gone three dots or maybe one more maximum bring a few in otherwise Stokes will just tip and run and leave broad with two you like that that's smart bowling from Cummins keeping it wide taking it away from his swinger taking his strength on the leg side away from him Took and run, and they leave Broad with two. They've just been cramping up a little bit there, Ben Stokes. Just about to say that I like that feel with that mid-off guy being there. They've actually changed it again. So three deep on the leg side. Hazelwood goes from mid-off over to mid-on. Looks like they're just looking for that one dismissal. Something fended off the shoulder of the bat or the glove. Can't catch it that. Well, you've got to give Broad a lot of credit here. We talked about Nathan Lyon coming out to bat for Australia yesterday with what we thought was not much to gain. 15 runs they put on for that last partnership yesterday. Great effort from the Australian off-spinner. Well, this is the same from Stuart Broad. This is uncomfortable. But this is Ashes cricket. This is what it's all about. You've got to stand there. You've got to take the blows. Catch it, Brent! Just short. Just short of short leg. Broad is surrounded again.
but more importantly for England, he is still there, fighting hard, 279 for six. Thirty-six for England since the lunch break. No wickets for Australia. Ben Stokes on one three five. That's when he made it heading, didn't he? In 2019. Stark to continue. Clubs it down the ground. There'll be no run there. An easy one if he wants to take it. But Australia got every player on the fence, bar the keeper and the bowler. Yeah, afternoon, Tubby. Well, Australia have regained some sort of control. Before lunch, it was all going off. Ben Stokes hitting boundary after boundary since lunch. More control, but not looking overly threatening. Ben Stokes happy to play the waiting game, pick the right ball. Done well to hit that there. That was an 89 mile an hour Yorker, and he's flicked it to backward square. There's no run in it, but I, he's, he's obviously seeing him so well now because that's the wicket ball right there. Moby just didn't get it low enough. Yeah, but I agree with you. That is the danger ball as far as Ben Stokes and England are concerned. Mitchell Stark's so good with that Yorker. Oh, that sounded really good. It is really good. <laughs> picked that slower ball and picked it up. Yeah, the sound of Ben Stokes' bat as he hit that one. That was right out of the screws. And we know with Ben Stokes, if it comes out the middle, it is going a long way over the boundary. Perfect length for Ben Stokes. Back of a length, sort of waist high, just higher than that. And out you go. saying a moment ago he's seeing them really well and he would have seen that change of grip in Mitchell Stark's hand there it, it, it's quite noticeable even as a pace out he was sitting on that waiting for it and again and again yes indeed over Smith at deep backward square this time two in a row and Stokes goes to 147. And those men out in the deep, they're waiting for it, but it just keeps going over their heads. Really does make a difference down that slope. The ball seems to travel that much further. And Stark now under pressure. And so are the Australian fielders. Because there may be an opportunity here. We've had one go down already since the lunch break. Goes back to the attempted walker. Just plays it away on the offside for a single and takes the single, yeah. So all the Australians under pressure now. They're only going to get a ball or two. Only one ball here at Stuart Broad to get it right. Yeah, and that's been the challenge for Australia since the lunch break. Stuart Broad's only faced 14 deliveries and just about nine overs now. So they haven't been able to bowl any sort of consistent number of de deliveries at Stuart Broad. And the ones he has faced, he's actually played remarkably well. We talk about him having a fallibility against a short ball. Well, he's had to dig a few out, wear a few blows, doing his job for his captain and his team. And where Stark goes here. Short. Does he try and hit the stumps or hit the boots? Stuart Broad. A couple of bat pads in place. Oh. Goes full and doesn't get it right. Down the leg side. Big cheer. Stuart Broad turns around as Alex Carey. Am I OK to Luke McCreese? Gets the crowd involved. 2.92 for six. 
pure theatre with Stuart Broad, isn't it? He's loved this, the pantomime villain. And he's making Australia feel very uncomfortable right now. Oh! Very difficult time for an, a, a captain, especially a bowling captain. Thinking about what options Australia have. Looks like Cameron Green is coming into the attack. And we kind of know with him what we're going to get. He's probably going to continue the short ball blitz. He's been the hardest to face when he's bowled at halfway down. There is a now a conversation happening between Cummins and his senior players. One thing they do need to do right now is commit to a plan. Need to feel like you're in control of events rather than being controlled by events. And this is where you earn your call as a captain. Yeah, you think they've got to roll the dice sooner or later, the Australians. I tend to agree with what Nasser was saying earlier on about eventually you're going to have to put a field, a few fielders up for a miss hit. Give him a bit of bait. But at the moment, he's just sitting there waiting for the right ball to hit. And he hits really well. He does it one day cricket, test match cricket. But he's just dictating the game. And then he just plonks the fourth or fifth ball down for a single. There's no one in that ring even for a missed time shot. Yeah, that is the problem. Unless Ben Stokes is caught on the boundary at the moment, it feels like there are no other opportunities to get him out. One thing he hasn't done, he hasn't hit many boundaries from this end. Most of them have been when the ball is bowling from the nursery end down the slope. So it's really fair enough going with his plan with Cameron Green here. Where does Green start? Oh, I was at him. Ben's in the way. You know, there's no doubt Australia is thinking to himself, well, eventually he's going to hit one up in the air. And as I said a moment ago, he's done that once since lunch, and unfortunately from an Australian point of view, Steve Smith didn't hang on to it. But will he hit another one? That's the problem. 79 to win now. A couple of big overs here. It's going to get very hard for Australia. Yeah, so the, the options for Pat Cummins are a change of field, get a few men up, ask Ben Stokes to play the big shot. Up till now, he's looked more than capable of playing that shot. I suppose it's a big call. They could bring the spinner on with two left-handers in, Travis Head. And if you're going to do that, you feel like they have to do that right now. You can't leave it much longer. So that is another option they've got. Doesn't take the one on this occasion. Third ball of the over. Yeah, that was the other option for me just before lunch, just to try the spin up. No doubt Cameron Green bowled at least one over too many prior to that lunch break. Travis Head did quite a bit of bowling this morning, and I thought we might have seen him a little bit earlier. But now this uh, this partnership is flourishing. 99 is the partnership. It does get harder now. Now's decision time for me. Pat Cummins, that's four balls bowled in this over. It's been a good over so far. No runs from it. Does he roll the dice here, Cummins, and try to keep Stokes away from the strike for next over? Yeah, Cummins going up to Cameron Green, having a conversation here, talking about where you're looking to bowl these last two deliveries and let me get my field right. A couple of men have come in. No, nope. and now they've gone out again, so... So the Australian captain happy with Stokes getting the single here, having one ball at broad. And he can't get that away. Now, now's an opportunity for Cummins. I think he's got to roll the dice here. Bring them all up. You give, you, you give away a four and a six to have an over at Stuart Broad here. They're all going to come in. Steve Smith getting himself involved here as well. He wants to see the men come up, and they are starting to come up right now. Mid-wicket comes in. Cover point comes up to the one. There's no one at extra cover at the moment. That seems like the obvious place for Ben Stokes to knock it in the offside. They might well be going for a bumper here. Well, Cummins is staying back at mid-off, too. I, I'm a little surprised with that. He might even try and flat bat it. It's got to be short. 
He'll try and get it over his head. Now he goes wide. Good bowling. T20 bowling. Well done, Cameron Green. That's a maiden. Can you believe it? Yeah, that was very good bowling, but I don't quite understand the field. If that's where he was looking to bowl, he had to have an extra cover in to prevent the one. They got away with it on that occasion. I think that's where you just need to take a moment as captain in these circumstances. Just allow yourself that little bit more time to think this stuff through. It all feels like it's going at a million miles an hour in this circumstance. Make sure you get your field in exactly the right place, otherwise you might well regret it. Well, here's Australia's chance. First time they're really going to have a, a good go at Stuart Broad. He said 99 is the partnership. Broad's made 10 of them, placed 25 balls. Got to get this right, Pat Cummins. The bowling's got to be good, and the field setting's got to be right. Yeah, exactly. So you want to be able to bowl six balls at Stuart Broad. You need the singles plugged, and you need the catching men in. You've got short leg, you've got silly point, you've got leg gully, you've got an orthodox gully and a mid-wicket in place. So again, almost inevitable that Mitchell Stark is going to go short here. But he has got the opportunity to set Stuart Broad up. That is the point. When With a number of deliveries to bowl at him, he can go short, short and then fire in that Yorker, which we know is so effective from Mitchell Stark. What's this conversation here, Straussy? What do you think he's going to bowl to you? Is it going to be the Yorker or the bouncer? Broadie's probably saying, I hope I get the Yorker. <laughs> Here we go. Leg gully. Regulation gully. Two bat pads. Oh, what a swing and a miss. Interesting that, that straight away Stuart Broad there was looking potentially for a bye. Uh, looking to maybe even run. It's a real... It doesn't carry through to carry or comes off slowly they may even think about running a bye yeah interesting I'm just thinking about that conversation between Broad and Stokes in between the overs it might have been Stuart Broad asking Stokes whether he should take this on or not the leg gully in there's a deep, a deep square leg there but I think Stuart Broad's going to have a flap here if he keeps getting short ones Cut. Yep. Well, that one's hit him it's gone the gap between Carey and Kawaju. The gully, they'll get a single. Might have been an inside edge. Just waiting to see. Yeah, little inside edge then onto the body, I suspect. They'll take every run, England. Well, the 100 partnership is up for England. It has been a mighty effective one. Stuart Ball has played his part, scoring 11 of them. An absolute nightmare scenario for the captain here. Can't keep Broad on strike. Ben Stokes comes back on strike with that short boundary down towards the tavern. And he'll be looking to go big again here against Stark, Mitchell Stark. Field all out again now. Everyone on the fence. And they'll wide. Might have off stump. Something Australia have done. Over the last 20 minutes or so, they've at least slowed up the scoring, apart from those two sixes that Stokes has hit from this, well, from bowling from the nursery end. He's hit all nine sixes from bowling from this end, from the nursery end. Ooh. For those who've got the money on the draw, you're out. Whips it away. Steve Smith certainly in the in the strike zone down there, isn't he? He's not having the greatest of time either. He's having trouble picking some of these up. One before lunch, he didn't pick up at all. He then dropped the catch after lunch. Broad was looking for the single, but Ben Stokes, I think, just disappointed with such a big full toss that one he felt he could have got that one away but you're right Steve Smith has struggled to pick it up even the catch he didn't set himself for it very unlike him he's such a safe pair of hands generally Steve Smith will be ruining that that's really well bowled really well bowled 
get a single for it as he squeezes it out the point. But again, the argument is, should Australia have brought in the fielders before then? Just feel with Mitchell Stark, letting Ben Stokes have a go, with Stark targeting the stumps. You feel like you've at least got half a chance of getting him out there, don't you? Well, this target's been whittling away, isn't it? It's down to 77 now. They came together, it was 178. Six. So, very few people in the bars and that out the back at the moment. When I walked around after our lunch break, everyone's absolutely riveted to this. I heard Ricky Ponting was getting some stick walking around the back. Did you get stick, Tubby? I suppose you weren't the villain, weren't you? You're a nice bloke, nice Aussie. Is there such a thing? Well, I did get one gentleman over near our area where we were doing our lunch from, and uh, he sort of said, what about Bearstow? And I said, uh, isn't he out? And he didn't get the joke at all. Oh! He might have been about six or seven pims deep as well, so it wasn't really in a jovial mood, I found. Well, there won't be much movement on that balcony right at the moment. They'll be keeping their, themselves very still. He's going to look for two this time. He's placed that nicely. We'll get back here. Yeah, good cricket. Good cricket all around. Stokes was brilliant there. Harris did a lot right. Marcus Harris down there. He got to it quickly, got it back in. It wasn't quick enough to stop Stokes going to 150. Another magnificent innings from the England captain. Well, the whole ground on its collective feet to mark a phenomenal innings by Ben Stokes. 151 not out of 197 balls, single-handedly taking England towards this Australian total. It has been utterly absorbing and cricket of the very, very highest quality. Just takes a moment now to gather himself, get the breath back. Whoa. Interesting enough, there 197 balls for that 150, but his last 100 runs from so from 51 to 151, only 98 balls. So he's put the foot down as he often does in these situations. Yeah, nine sixes, nine fours for Ben Stokes masterclass in reading the situation understanding what your options are and then executing to order but it's a good short one that england have got their noses in front on the wind predictor 51 49 that would be i would say the first time since the toss almost i reckon that they've been in front in the game yeah, and cricket's such a game of mo momentum, isn't it? It's felt since Ben Stokes pushed the gamble button when Stuart Broad came in, 
that momentum has shifted so dramatically towards England. All the questions being asked of the Australian bowlers and the Australian captain at the moment. No answer up to this point. Field coming up a little bit now. Three men saving one now. There's one of them. David Warner, mid-wicket. No run. One ball left in the over. So here we go. Let's see what Australia do now. Do they bring everyone up? Just feel like Pat Cummins has sort of hedged his bets somewhat up till now. Had men sort of out in the deep as well as men on the single, trying to prevent the boundary and the single at the same time, which is obviously very difficult to do. He's kept the field the same. Does he bowl the same ball? Wide Yorker. Last ball, the over. No, he bowls it straight and just punches it down the ground. The easy one, you can walk the one. Two ninety-seven for six, seventy-four to win. Well, plenty of highlights here from Ben Stokes' innings. When he went, it went long. You'll see many of these shots, but the commitment to the shot, the picking the right ball, and that one was absolutely crunched. He is an outrageous cricketer. That was the moment of fortune. Steve Smith will be ruining that for a long time, but it has been outstanding from Ben Stokes. Genuinely right out of the top draw. So strong, isn't it? So strong. When he gets them out of the middle, they go an absolute mile, but even when he doesn't, they still go a long way. Australia will rue those missed chances. He's one of those guys who doesn't give easy chances because he swings so hard. In these sort of games, you've just got to grab one of those opportunities. Australia have had a couple. Look at that. 80 to 120, 40 runs off 19 balls there in the middle. The start continue. Still get the feeling that Australia are just waiting for Ben Stokes to hit one up in the air, aren't they? That's their only plan, really. And of course, the longer he is at the crease, 152 or 202 balls now, the less likely that is to occur. And whips that away. That was right at the stumps again. Right at the stumps. He's good enough to hit it, isn't he? It's across the, well, partly across the line where he's hitting that ball, but he sees the ball so well. I reckon Mitchell Stark feels he's in with a chance here. Where's this going to hit? I don't know, it's probably outside off. It's probably out, not going to hit the stumps either. It's definitely the most threatening delivery right at the moment. It's the one that you most like, you think it, Australia most likely to take the wicket with. So, mixture of full and short. Bottom edge, oh, that's onto the thigh. Yeah. Saying earlier, that's the last thing you need to do is hit Ben Stokes. He generally plays better. The more injuries he gets, the better he, he plays. <laughs> it is a magnificent charge situation, isn't he, Ben Stokes? I mean, it's easy to sit up here and watch it and see what players should do but it's a very different situation when you're out there and your heart is beating there's adrenaline going through your body to remain that calm and composed utterly extraordinary yeah. hammer to mid off again this time they'll take the one I'm going to give broad two balls to face the will come up australia need a wicket shortly though Never in mind, England are only six down here. Only Robinson, I think he's a reasonable player. He can, he can hold up an end. He can do Broad's job. So Australia need to strike shortly. Said so Tung and Anderson, probably not so much, but 
Australia need to break this partnership very shortly. And it's going to get really tough. Yeah, the new ball is due in 10 overs time. You would have thought England would get probably 40 odd of those 70 runs needed by then at the very least. So it's late in the piece if that is going to have an impact. From England's perspective, they'll be looking at this going, if Stokes gets out, you can't really expect the tail to get more than, well, if they got 30, you'd say that's a good effort for those last three wickets. So it is all on that prized wicket of Ben Stokes. Of course, they'd like to get broad out, but we all know who the wicket they really need is. Still a strange field for mine. Still a lot of people out on the boundary on the leg side. Oh, touches that. That'll go through. Cummins will probably stop it. Well, Gordy's got back for two. Stokes has scored none. Do he get, does he get one for that? <laughs> In the end, that's a dot ball. 298 for six. <laughs> I'm trying to think this. I mean, it seems like an easy two, so I'm surprised that Ben Stokes hasn't gone for it. <laughs> There's a failure to communicate. Well, even Ben Stokes here acknowledges that, yeah, there probably was two there. He nods at him at the end of it. Brody's saying, hey, you're costing me test runs. I should be 13. <laughs> Another chat between the Aussie hierarchy out there. Who's next? Josh. Looks like it's going to be Hazelwood this time from the pavilion end of the ground. It's slowed the scoring rate, Australia, but this is where Stokes is so good. He, he, he's happy. He's not unhappy with that. He doesn't feel like he needs to keep scoring at that sort of 10, 12 and over as he was doing before lunch. Yeah, that ab ability to go up and down the gears is what makes him so remarkable. So many players, once they're going, they'll just go at every delivery. Ben Stokes has been able to judge the right time and the right place. He hasn't hit any to this, to the mound, sorry, the grandstand up the top of the hill here. He's tended to look to hit this more offside. Yes, it always feels like it, it's a longer hit. I suppose it slightly is where the pitch is to, for this test match, but just hitting it up the hill. We saw Mitchell Stark hit one late yesterday, but Rahan sort of reached out, flicked back in the deep, which would have been, which would have just gone for six. It always feels like a bigger hit to that left of your screen there. And I think also the angle of the pitch, the, the ball's going away from you, is harder to fetch it, I suppose. Just feels from the other end, the nursery, and that everything's in your favour just to pick it up. Down the hill there. It's going through his mind. Pat Cummins. How do I get rid of my opposite, opposite number? How do I get him out? I've been thinking that now for a long time today. Had those two tough chances. Need one more, Australia. They need to create another opportunity. Yeah, well, I think you're getting to a stage where you just can't afford to wait any longer. You've got to be proactive as a captain, do something. Maybe bring one of the men from the leg side and have them sort of catching at cover point or something in bowl wide. Like, you've got to have a plan to, to get Stokes out. You can't just wait. Stokes is too good a player. He's been in for too long now. Yeah, I'd certainly like to see someone in that sort of deepish or sort of a backward point position and maybe a shortish cover. Digs that out, he'll get a single. Once again, Broad will have two balls to face. If you can bowl full and wide to Stokes, into that a little bit of where the, the bowlers follow through, one might just hold out. If you're looking for a single, 
It brings sort of a backward point into play as a catching man or a short cover to try and create an opportunity that's not caught on the fence. Yeah, and also by taking maybe the, the deep mid-wicket out, you're giving him a gap to go for. But if you're bowling wide of the crease, that's a hard shot for him to play. So maybe you just need to pose the question for him, set the challenge and see if he's good enough to be able to deliver. Broad back on strike now. Australia sticking with the same field they've had pretty much all the time to Stuart Broad. Those two men under the helmets, the gully in position. They have actually dropped the, the leg gully back out on the leg side boundary there. I think as a result of Broad trying to go at it, we saw that against Mitchell Stark. He's starting to play that pull shot quite effectively. Look at through cover. That's the other thing that I, I would like to see. Someone catching in at cover. This ball is, well, the air's gone out of it, the ball. The pitch has really died. There's no real pace on those short ones. It brings in sort of those catching cover positions just for the ball flicked up. Second new ball due. Nine overs from now. Still 72 to get. Loves it down the leg side, won't take the one though. Ben Stokes is not even at the crease at the other end. <laughs> 72 to win, 299 for six. The afternoon break has come at a good time for Australia who need to regroup and Pat Cummins has been doing a lot of talking in uh, that gathering. It's been an unbelievable day's cricket. It's not done yet. England still needs 72 more. It's all on Ben Stokes, as it seems to have so often been. He's unbeaten on 154, playing another great, great innings for his country. They need him out, Australia. They've had a couple of chances. The game was sparked into action, really, when this happened. This was the last ball of the 52nd over, when Bairstow wandered out of his crease before... The over had been called and it wasn't dead, so he was given out. And then Broad came on just to uh, light uh, another fuse and spark things up. And then Stokes took off. He'd been pretty becalmed, actually, with Duckett and Bairstow for company. But suddenly he started to play shots. Two chances went down. Smith and then Carey down the leg side. But other than that, he's played quite magnificently. He's hit nine sixes. And all of them have been swung over the leg side. And the crowd have stood to him when he made 100. And he's just passed 150 a short while ago. Stuart Broad as well has been in there for, what, 96 minutes now. An hour and a half's batting. He's faced 32 ball. He's had bits chipped off him. But KP has shown a lot of courage. It's been one of the most incredible days of test cricket and we called yesterday incredible just because of where England bowled and the nature of the test match but this test day has been quite something not often you get every commentator every spectator everybody in the ground just glued to the action no one is leaving their seat and it's one guy and Ath you're a hundred percent right he's the guy for England and Australia need to find some way, just some way, to see the back of Ben Stokes. Yeah, that's what they'll be saying to themselves, or should be saying to themselves. 72 is, is a lot of runs. They get rid of Stokes, you wouldn't back Robinson, Tong, Anderson and Broad to muster, what, more than maybe 40, 50 maximum? But uh, if Stokes is there... And that's what he says to himself. His mantra in these situations is that I am going to be there at the end. And somehow, from deep within himself, he finds the willpower to do it. And it's something that is just innate. It's born with some people. And that man has it more than most. So Cummins it is who has taken on the responsibility. The ball is 71 one overs old. We'll get a new one in nine overs time. But for now, it's Cummins to Stokes, captain to captain. 
And I, I was just watching Cummins talk in the group, and I, I sensed that he was talking about trying to push the ball a bit wider of Stokes to make him hit through the offside. All his boundaries, sixes, have come over the leg side, and he starts with a slower ball and a wide one. 35 runs in the first half hour after lunch, and then Australia started to bowl wide. It was Ricky Ponting who was talking about that tactic. Bowl wide outside off stump, and if Ben Stokes hits you through cover, hits you over cover, then you've just got to say, well played. 21 runs only in the next half hour. There again. And Australia just slowing the game down. Just also remember that the new ball is due in just over eight. Yeah, 8.4 overs. Do they take it if it comes around, Av? They're going to have to take it, I think. If, if, either way, if Stokes is still there, you have to change something. You have to make something happen. And if Stokes is not there and the tail's in, then you obviously want the new ball either way. So I think they'll have to take it as and when it comes. I'll tell you one thing right now, KP. Australia are very happy that they pushed Nathan Lyon out of the door to score some runs. What did the last pair put on, Benedict? 15? 15 to the last pair. And it was an incredible bit of cricket, but those are very valuable runs right now. I think when you're chasing a, a total like this, or what Australia were doing last week in Birmingham, the closer you get, the more pressure starts to build. Brilliant again from Australia. And it doesn't seem impossible, and an hour ago, just before lunch, as England 300 comes up and the crowd goes up, and Australia only needs, or sorry, England only needs 71 now. And then it becomes a lot harder, and that's why I think Australia's tactic now to slow everything down and to bowl wide outside the stumps to Stokes is is smart. They could have gone there earlier, but emotion, so much emotion. You've got to try and take all that emotion out of the oh, game that's... right now. Stokes has done it. That's... And is this Australia's turn? Oh, Rico, Here we go. Amazing atmosphere in the ground. It's normally like a uh, quiet garden party here at Lords with just a gentle hum around the ground. It's more like the atmosphere is more like Melbourne or somewhere at the moment. Oh! Raucous, cheering every run, every wide. And there's another one to the total. And we'll talk about Ben Stokes and we'll talk about him for a very long time because he's a once in a generation cricketer, sportsman. But I think when you talked about Stuart Broad and you talked about the chips that have been taken away from Stuart Broad over the last hour and a half, he's been batting for 104 minutes. And there's been a lot of theatre in that as well. He hasn't just mined himself. He wasn't happy when he walked out to bat. He came in after that controversial Johnny Bairstow run out. <laughs> <laughs> He's a real drama queen, isn't he? <laughs> he plays right up to it. He loves, he loves it. The theatre. Competitiveness of an Ashes series. Only three bowlers have taken more wickets in Ashes than Stuart Broad. He <laughs> loves it. <laughs> oh. Keeps a bit low and Broad does well to keep it out with great drama, make sure he stays in his ground at the end of the over, 301 for six. As emotional as he is, uh, he's very, very calm as Stuart Broad, having played with him for a very long time. He knows the situation and he knows the enormity of what the situation presents. He'll also know and understand what Ben Stokes is trying to do. He's one of the better players to have out there with Ben Stokes now. Doesn't mind the Australians, doesn't mind the booing, doesn't mind anything. Well, that uh, new ball is just eight overs away, but Pat Cummins has tried to get this one changed. But uh, it's in shape, it's gone through the hoops, no problems at all, so they'll have to bowl with it for another eight overs. It's Hazelwood from the pavilion end, he's taken some hammer today, he's been the most expensive. 
Australia bowler, one for 71 in 14. Sliced away, Carey and Carey Hazelwood combine to end a quite magnificent innings from Ben Stokes, who has not moved. He wanted to get his team over the line. He's not done it. He's left England 70 short, but those Australia players know what they've witnessed today. Steve Smith, first of all, then Pat Cummins went to congratulate Stokes. The end of the most magnificent innings. It doesn't matter if you're English, if you're Australian, or you're from anywhere else in the world, what you have witnessed today from Ben Stokes is nothing other than magical. Everyone will stand and applaud something spectacular. Yes, the Australians will be up. Everybody in the stadium is up because it was absolutely brilliant.